no. There we go. Fantastic. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Neshoba Regional School Committee meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order and begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we're going to begin the superintendent selection process. And to start, I would like to make a motion that we proceed to the discussion related to the superintendency and appointment of a superintendent of schools. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Right. Unanimous. And just as a point of order, is this something that Joe is documenting, Dorothy, with regard to this? I'm doing that right now. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Okay. We got a video too. So, um, this matter is appropriately before the school committee, and uh, we are going to now embark upon our discussion on the three candidates. So, we're going to take them one at a time in um, alphabetical order. And before we do that, though, I think that Dr. McCarthy, you'd like to provide us with a little bit of context on the site visits before sure. we start sharing information. Sure. Um, and maybe the whole process. The whole process. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's start with the, the site visits. I mean, um, I think Dorothy could probably do a better job on, on the whole process than I could, but um, the, the screening committee, I mean, uh, we had 14 members from the screening committee, um, and uh, we had 18, um, let me see, applications. 18 applications to be our superintendent of schools. We had uh, the screening committee that had 14 members and we narrowed it down to um, eight that we decided to interview. It's so tough to talk with the last one. Um, and from those eight that we interviewed, we came up with three finalists that we presented to the school committee, which was which was our charge. Um, all of this information it has been um, given at school committee meetings. It is also available on um, the website, and um, for people to see, we have a special section on the website on the superintendent search. So, um, but I, I feel that we've had so much um, given so many opportunities for the community to be able to be part of this and. Uh, the screening committee is a great example of how the, um, the public um, became part and, um, and how they can uh, continue to, you know, how their input has continued. I, just, I wish I were the, the candidate so I could take this off. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so is it all right if I go on to? Uh, yes, and then we can circle back if there are any additional questions. Okay. So I used to watch people on TV when they, you know, their mask would go down and think, why can't they just keep their mask in the right place? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so I have some general thoughts on site visits in general. And so it starts off like this. For our three site visits, um, there were a total of 22.5 total hours. Sharon, Park, and I were present for all but about an hour and a half of that time. and. Um, we made sure that other members were there to cover those times. <clears throat> so all interviews uh, in the site visits had at least two of us, and some had up to five members who were able to be in attendance. I realized that some members, due to their professional roles, could not be present for any of the site visits, and others were present for as many as they could. But it's important for the whole committee to realize that Sharon and I took on the responsibility of due diligence for all three of the site visits on behalf of the whole committee. I've reflected on the site visits that we conducted this week, and I want to share my thoughts. I've planned and participated in many site visits. Back when I was on the Emerson School Committee in the late 80s, we had two superintendent finalists, and I led one site visit to Rhode Island for the candidate um, who was ultimately chosen as our new superintendent. In that site visit, as well as in others, I experienced 
the site visiting team, um, they, we, you would travel to the district. You had the advantage of entering into the culture of another district where a red carpet of sorts was rolled out. Um, the candidate's district would offer its hospitality, provide beverages, wonderful snacks, and lunch. And the human interactions and connections all added to the experience, with even the small side talk conveying valuable insights into the working relationship between the candidate and his colleagues. Everything was set up for the visiting team, and the responsibility was on the district up to the time when the interviews of the interviews when the visiting team would take over. On site visits via Zoom are very different. The immersion in the culture of the other district was not physically available to us. We were working in the neutral environment of Zoom. However, we were able to interact with 73 individuals from the three districts through the site visit. 73. Um, what I didn't anticipate was that in the loss of the physical hosting district, we would become not just the visitors, but also the hosts. Yeah. What I mean is that we had to create a welcoming environment through Zoom and provide not only our questions as conversation starters, but we needed to keep the ball rolling. In some cases, handle the, the, the Zoom hosting as people entered and watch our time with the timeline that the finalists had set up, all while we were taking notes, asking follow-up follow uh, questions. It was intense work, and of course, the district couldn't provide us with snacks and lunch via Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> However, the finalists set up schedules with all the key people in the district that we were hoping to talk to. And we had many in-depth conversations and found strong corroboration and examples that brought to life the candidates' values, experiences, and, achieve and, and achievements. The crowning realization for me was interacting with so many individuals teachers, administrators, parents, town officials, community members who are all dedicated to the education of their community's children to benefit, first of all, all our all important, uh, their, and, and ours, all important students, and also our whole society. So I, I really wanted to highlight the difference in what it was like, um, and, and I expected it would be conversational, but it was, um, it was a lot more. And yet, there's a lot of information that we gained, and I hope that the people who were able to participate in some of the site visits will also speak to um, your experiences in, in being um, at site visit via Zoom. Okay, that's the first part I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. And Thank you so much for all of your hard work. This was an absolutely mo like momentous undertaking, and you did a fantastic job of Thanks. pulling all of this together and Thanks. making this happen for us. Thanks. Thank you. I also want to, I want to share this with, with Sharon um, in terms of the site visits, and also with Sharon and Rich in terms of the screening committee. Mm -hmm. So. So we all, we all did a lot of that. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And, and I was going to say that too. Thank you so much to you, Sharon, for all the time you dedicated to the site visits and to everyone, really, for all the time you're putting into this. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to add on to that. Mary, you are a superstar. <laughs> Not only did you take the lead and, and you know, really keep this whole process with the site visits going, but you have put countless hours in before we even got to this place with Dorothy and with the screening committee and all of the paperwork which was enormous um, to, to make this happen and I am so grateful to you for all of all of that work that you did. Thank um, you Sharon. To make that happen. Yeah. And I wish that we could have been in the district too. I mean oh it would have been wonderful. You you don't realize until you don't have it the experience that you miss by not being in the environment. But that being said they were it, they were amazing, amazing people. Yeah, we should thank all the people who attended the site Absolutely. visits and gave us uh, their time so selfless, selflessly, and they were all so gracious. And it was great to meet everybody. It was. It was. Um, so, do you have another question around the uh, process, Amy? I I have received some questions about how the candidates that were selected as finalists were vetted. 
and um, I think Mary addressed a lot of the work that the screening committee did on behalf of the district mm -hmm. to reach out to stakeholders from each candidate's districts, um, talk to people from you know all the different ways that they could interact with their districts. Um, but I think it'd be for the benefit of the community, it'd be nice to reaffirm that someone has verified certifications, education, um, and you know other attributes that the, the candidates have put on their resumes. And so I don't know if Dorothy um, could speak to that. That's done at the time their application is put in. Yep. So that would that would be done as the applications are received. Okay. Thank you very much for confirming that. Thanks. Great. Yeah, Mary. Could I I'd just say because I'm not sure the mask I would not the mask I got it now. Um, we am not sure that I answered the question about the driving at the beginning. The um, screening committee, we received all 18 um, uh, packets of application. We mm -hmm. received all of them. So the vetting that went on there was that um, the screening committee made the decisions and uh, decided on the eight people that we would um, interview. Yeah. Then it came down to three. So that was part of the vetting. Too. Okay. Thank you. There's a lot. Thanks, Mary. Question. Thank you. So everybody, just a quick note on the process, the method that we will use this evening. This is more or less review from what we talked about last night. So thank you for giving us that background on the process that you guys have engaged in. Uh, how we'll pick this up now is we're going to go around the table. We're going to talk about each candidate one at a time, and we're going to kind of share all of the things that we know about the candidate from the site visits that we attended. So for example, if I wasn't able to attend an afternoon session, but Brett was, then I will be able to hear from Brett on what he learned at the site visit that he was at. And so, Dorothy, correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys can feel free to take notes at this point in time. I do have some scratch paper, or I'm sure you guys could take notes on your phone, it's up to you, or you could probably keep it all in your head. Um, so as we go around the table, we'll go alphabetically, and if somebody wants to, you know, I'll allow you guys to just volunteer information. If you think that there's something that you can contribute, we don't need to go around to each individual person. But let's talk today, or talk right now, about the site visits for Dr. Shokat. Is there anything that anybody wants to share about their experience? So, Leah, I'll, um, I'm willing oh. to start. And I, so I spent a lot of time on this today trying to figure this out because I probably had 40 pages of notes <laughs> from, from all of these visits. Mm -hmm. And I decided after trying to consolidate and not still not getting down to what I felt was a reasonable amount of notes that I was going to summarize with three categories. Mm -hmm. So um, if, if it's okay with you, what I'd like to do is rather than section by section of the visit, um, I kind of tried to take the visit as a whole and s give some descriptive or action words that I heard coming from the visit. Um, give some potential challenges that were brought up as part of the visit, um, and also some quotes that came from people during the visit. Um, and, and I would say this is not my, what I have here is not necessarily, it is a summation of what I took as notes. So the things I jotted down that people said to me. So it is not reflective of my opinion or such, it is, truly just trying to transcribe what I heard. Excellent. So these are the descriptive words that um, came out of my notes for Beth, is that she is committed, she is accessible, she is a lifelong learner, she is a good communicator, she is an advocate, she is a listener, she is a problem solver, and is able to see multiple perspectives. She has integrity. She is a team player. She is proactive. 
and um, she has a great understanding of equity and social justice, um, which is something that was important throughout the process. That was something that was highlighted on many different fronts that we are wanting, mm -hmm. looking for. Mm -hmm. um, the challenges that came up, the potential challenges that came up um, that I heard were that um, she has worked with her superintendent for the past three years to prepare to be a superintendent of schools. Um, but this would be her first superintendency, and so it's a hands-on learning curve um, for that. And the quotes that I heard, um, she has the courage of her convictions to tackle problems. And her superintendent said, Beth is ready, and this is an opportunity to catch someone who is on the rise. So that is my kind of summation of the things that I heard um, from those site visits. Thank you, Sharon, for keeping that so objective. I really appreciate that. Would anybody else like to share anything that they've heard? Go for it, Mary. So uh, the same, so, some of the same um, dilemma that Sharon talked about. You know, I have um, five pages of notes, and I tried, and I started with the first site visit that we went to, and so, and this was the third. So, um, but I, I'll, I liked how you did that, Sharon. So some of the things that I that people said, um, people. Uh, talked about her grace and skill and how impressive she is and she's honest, enthusiastic, um, driven. Her, her work with um, social justice and keeping the social justice and equity lens um, just pervaded everything. Um, it, from, from the teachers to parents um, to, um, well, to, every, to school committee members, we're talking about that, her collaboration. Um, people talked about her, how courageous she was on behalf of students um, and what, what was, is best for students. The turnaround that she had done at her school that was so different from when she first came there. Uh, we even got to talk to students, you know. Students um, who were not at school, no less. It was a half day. It was a half day. day. They had gone home. Right. And, and so still we got had, uh, the youngest was second grade. So, now imagine the whole thing with Zoom and second and second grade, and they were so good, muting themselves and not, and, um, and 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 one of the students, the students with special needs, did a great job, and the other students were so, and, and you had mentioned this, so so incredibly patient. Talk about wait time, and he did fine. He did, he just needed a little bit more time. Um, to, to get his thoughts out than, than some of the others. They, they talked about what a wonderful principal she is. Um, people talked about what a, a, a wonderful colleague. Mm -hmm. As a principal, uh, a mentor to other principals, um, and, um, and also talking to, there's a community, I think the only community member that we talked to uh, was someone, and this was, was really so moving, uh, his late wife uh, had been a teacher in, in the school, and um, he talked about the, the safe environment. Uh, the students were given a voice, and, and he continued because um, she had reached out to him and, brought, and continued to keep him part of the school community. And not only that, his, his father-in-law had um, donated they give their time, but also the, their treasure and um, large, you know, large contributions to the school. Understanding um, the projects that, that Beth was involved in and, and supporting that. So um, that was, that was. I mean, there were a lot of very moving moments, but that was certainly one. So that her, um, the genuineness of, of who she is and, and her uh, dedication to students and to social justice um, and bringing that in. In fact, the day we were there, they were doing an all district um, professional development mm -hmm. in terms of equity and they've done the equity audits. Mm -hmm. So is there anybody else that was, I can come back. I'm, I'm Go ahead, Rich. I was just gonna build on that. I think I 
I sat in, it was mostly the staff, and I think the mayor of the town was there, and the superintendent. Yeah. And um, who else was there? I mean, there was another, there was a couple teachers. Special, uh, special ed. Special ed, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I just would remark on the staff who said that they were, she was very generous with her time and had a very empathic leadership in terms of helping um, the people on her staff, or I think just at large that were in the faculty, other staff members, helping them to to improve in a in a in a welcoming way. So I thought that was spoke volumes about her leadership. Thanks, Rich. Um, I was only able to join this the site visit for Dr. Choquette for a small amount of time, but it was during the site visit with the superintendent and the, the same one Rich was just referring to. And what I um, what stood out to me from that site visit was um, their pride in the code of conduct mm -hmm. that she yes. put together um, for the district. Co COVID code of conduct, right? It wasn't a COVID thing. No, it was that she she um, championed the need for looking at the entire district as a whole instead of oh, having yes. a code of conduct for That's each right. school. She developed one for the entire district from K to 12, and really um, saw the project through. And, and they were extremely proud of her work product um, and the fact that that was her idea, and she did it. You know, and it was successful. So, and if I could go again, certainly um, the, the, the the parents of, of students with special needs, uh, some of them also spoke. And while initially, and I guess it was four years ago, that the model that they have of um, more, more fully inclusion and not having as many sub separate programs, although as she described it, sounded as though they still did. They have a BCBA. And they still have a flex, they call it flexible space, but it sounds very much um, as though it, it's, it's a place where students can come who need to have a little time before they go back into the classroom. But what was especially uh, remarkable, uh, I thought, because we've heard um, something about how controversial everything was, were the parents who said that initially that they were uh, concerned and um, because their students had special needs and they, and they felt as if their students wouldn't be getting what they needed. But now they feel they are wholly on board. And in fact, one of the examples uh, the superintendent gave was that when they started back to school um, after COVID, of course, the most vulnerable students, the students with the most severe special needs, came in first. And, um, and that was handled and everybody was there and then the parents started to complain they said wait a second this isn't the kind of education that our students are used to where are the peers where are their peers uh, where are the other students the typically developing students that's what that's what makes all of this work so i thought that that was um that was pretty remarkable to, to hear and that we should we should get more that too uh i was also at dr choquette's um site visits and what I asked was uh, in response to the fact that she doesn't have any superintendency experience and I asked the staff what are her transferable skills that you think would apply to her becoming the superintendent and they said that she is an excellent problem solver that she's a great multitasker and I think that probably 20 times people said that she has never dropped a ball and that she is um, very task oriented and always follows through, and that she is a lifelong learner. I heard that. Uh, there was there were many references to her dedication to social justice, um, and all and any initiative related. And the code of conduct was kind of wrapped into that. And I also we also talked to the teachers a little bit about the implementation of that full inclusion model and how and their perspective on how it was rolled out. And they said that um, after a while they were willing to shift and, and eventually implemented and that she was always accessible in there to try to assist with that, that she was approachable and she advocates for people and did the same for her staff. Great. 
history. Yeah. One more thing that her tagline is, uh, it's on a lot of things, every child, every day. And she really knows all, all the students. What was it, every child in a day? Every, every child, every day. Uh, every child, comma, every day. Uh, and one additional thing too, the sense of community was, you could feel that sense of community through the screen. I, it really drew you in um, across the board with the, with the teachers, with the parents, with the children. Um, they are so connected and, and that is really a community um, in, in her school in Northampton. All right, everybody. Anything else to add? So let's now uh, share our experiences around Mr. Downing's site visits. Could anybody like to begin? I hope you said you to it, you know, fashion words. I know, I have to say that when you have this, all those hours that we, so I guess it's four or more total hours, mm -hmm. um, and, and taking notes, some of which were, were a little hard to decipher. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I could tell after a while. I used to teach English, so I can read people's writing, mine usually, um, but I mean, again, we were trying to keep everybody um, Keep eye contact and, and just so write things That's down. A lot. But um, let me tell you um, a little bit about. Um, sort of, I, have, I sort of did what you did, Sharon, in the beginning. Um, things that I heard: dynamic leader and also a down-to-earth person who cares deeply about students and, and works passionately for the success. Person who possesses empathy and looks for empathy in the people he hires. One of his hiring questions we were told is. Uh, he says, can you ever have too much empathy? And there is a right answer to that. And when people don't give the right answer, they may not get the job. Um, an active listener who, holds, who builds strong relationships and solves problems collaboratively. Person who really connects with people, brings them in, and keeps them in. Visionary thinker who sees the large picture and keeps the details in focus to strategic thinker who uses systems thinking. An administrator who seeks and uses data for decision making, an administrator who empowers others and has learned to delegate well. So we met with, um, this was just, this is for, you know, we met with um, five community members, five principals, five school committee and town officials, and five teachers. Um, the first site visit was with the superintendent of schools, Dr. Anna Nolan who assured us she wasn't trying to get rid of her. Um, she called him the most outstanding principal she had ever worked with. And then she laughed a little and said, other than herself. <laughs> and, uh, she talked about they worked together for his 30 hour um, practicum. Um, Dr. Nolan earned her doctorate at the Boston College Lynch School of Education. Uh, she currently serves there as an adjunct professor in the master's and doctoral program. So Kirk got the benefit of her expertise in the, his on-the-job experience working closely with her. Then we had a group meeting with the director, with a number of directors, um, human resources, who was the person who initially hired Kirk and called him focused, innovative. Uh, he recognizes leaders and groups and empowers them, um, uses systems thinking. See, I was going through this. I, there's going to be more here um, <laughs> because this is going to be the first one. I just, I just needed another, another day or two. Um, he is, uh, he's been successful in collective bargaining. He uses a collaborative approach and in interest-based bargaining. He shares his ideas visually. Um, what he'll do sometimes is write the ideas on a board or someplace where others can read it, and he invites them to comment, which makes them feel invited, but it also gives visual representation, uh, and he's a data guy. This is, there are three superint assistant superintendents in data, so there's an assistant superintendent for finance, who said that Kirk has a great grasp on finances and oversees many grants, including the district entitlement grants, as well as others. He presents the school committee on why funds are needed and how the district can fund various projects. 
The next the assistant superintendent of student services works closely with Kirk almost daily because they have two areas of student services and curriculum instruction and, and innovation intersect. Uh, they work closely together on the RTI response to intervention, which Kirk um, brought into when he was a principal uh, and has provided professional development for teachers throughout the district. They worked recently on the new um, DESI dyslexia guidelines, which I had, hadn't even heard about. I thought I was kind of up on what was going on, but I hadn't heard about these. And, and these are big. This is, this is scientific breakthroughs in terms of dyslexia. Um, and DESI has quite a, quite a wonderful guide that I have now read. And so they're working on plans um, to uh, educate us and parents on these new guidelines. He called Kirk unflappable. Um, Kirk has the big picture and collects data to support student growth. The next person was the director for digital learning, who um, Kirk is her direct supervisor. And she described him as an advocate who helped her bridge her knowledge um, her knowledge of digital learning with teaching and, and, and pedagogy. They design tools and professional development for the integration of digital tools with curriculum for educators. The director for communication met with us and described him as team oriented, a change manager, and she highly values Kirk as a working colleague um, and with whom she shares ideas and looks at his feedback. Actually, she called him a confidant and she felt that she was that to him too. Director of Technology said that he's a great asset to their team. Collaborator, strategist, and planner, and doer who rallies people with him. He's enthusiastic, has a great sense of humor. The reason I went into so much um, in regard to that is this is called the, the Native Cabinet, and they are comparable to Central Office, um, what, what we have in, in the show book. Uh, parents, we're parents of, of students with special needs. One of them talked about the fact that um, he would, this parent was in an IEP meeting. Uh, Kirk was a principal and at the Brown School, where he had been, he was a very successful principal there. And um, at the meeting, the, things weren't going so well in the meeting, and the parent was upset, and um, Kirk was there. And he analyzed what was going on, and there were a number of people. This was a, a big um, you know, special education meeting. And Kirk, very, very quietly, asked the team chair and this parent if they would just, he could take them aside. And so they went into another room. And uh, it says that he didn't take sides. This is what the parent said. He didn't, he listened and listened carefully. And he helped them to find a common solution. And this was the parent talking about that. Um, another parent on the school council just talked about how amazing he was and he met with every single family. They have quite a diverse population. They have a flag, um, lots of flags as you come into the foyer. Kirk made sure that there was a flag for every single um, country that any student had come from and talked about that he had the heart of the whole school. Another parent whose son has a genetic syndrome and um, she's so happy and her child is so happy and thriving in a general setting and learning. Another parent who was, I, I could quote, unhappy and grumpy about a special education concern made her, her concern um, known and felt that she got a good resolution. PTO president, who talked about the fact that Kirk challenged the PTO to have prizes for classes um, that would be more inclusive and would not be seen as um, just rewarding the students whose parents might be the ones who sold the most of whatever it was, and <laughs> you know, that, that divide that's there. So uh, what he did is, it, at the assemblies, the class that won could, you know, have something a little out of the ordinary, and um, the one year they, they shaved um, Kirk's head, and another year he was slimed. And nice. um, you know, he did it all with, with a smile. Uh, parents said he has open door policy, always available. Um, he had uh, potlucks, and potluck dinners, and Spanish suppers um, to bring in the families um, that weren't always coming to events of the school. He also held um, meetings in their homes, and um, he, that he's knowledgeable, that he's visible, he's in the classes, uh, takes time to learn the culture, and uh, then school committee and town officials 
included the chief of police, who talked a lot about the school and district emergency plans and the collaboration that they did together. Um, two school committee members, they were former Brown parents and, and spoke very highly of him. Um, I was most impressed by, by the members of the um, finance committee. Yeah. Who were, who were, and I hope you just chime in on this, that they were, uh, they were, they had an education subcommittee. And I kept looking and saying, Are these finance people? Because they knew so much about the policies and about the programs and about well, why the money was needed. They knew all about this. And I really thought, I'm looking at the wrong, this, this can't be finance. No offense to anybody <laughs> on advisory or finance. But they understood so much. And then we heard how they met um, on a regular basis. And they could become advocates. But also, they were the ones who would say to Kurt, Kurt, go back. You know, what is this for? Why is this? Does this have to be so much? And he would go back and then come back to them. So all a Three lot times of a month they met. Hmm? Three times a month they met. That was that what it was? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, was it, it seemed like I'm glad you were both there for that too yeah. because it was just it was remarkable. Um, there was also a member of the Natick Kennedy Middle School Building Committee, and um, which Kirk has been a part of. Um, and the, the finance people said that he had a good breadth of in all school finances. Um, one said that he had the patience of Job. I wrote that down. Um, <laughs> that he understand that, that he understands all the drivers of the budget as well as the funding sources. Um, another called him an excellent communicator, finding new ways to do things better. Uh, for example, they asked they found that they were getting pieces of the budget different departments and it was too fragmented. They, they asked her to come back with a consolidated view of the budget and he, and he did that. Um, teachers talked about his knowledge of pedagogy and you see this is how far I got and I have like so many other pages so I'm hoping other people will you know maybe pick up on you know, some of the things you think like what could you have left out. But. Thanks Mary. Okay. Go ahead, Mary. Yeah I, I just want to pick up like that was great thank you. You said just about everything that uh and a lot actually I didn't know because I didn't go to the whole thing. But one, I, I don't remember who it was exactly, I think it might, was either a PTO person, was saying when he let the kids shave his head, it like cemented him as like a leader in the community. And it, she said they really changed the, um, the dynamic in the school. Um, and, you know, he was able to kind of change the culture from there. So I thought that was... You know, we, you think that's kind of a throwaway thing, maybe like a little bit of a cheap shot. Oh, you know, shave my head. But it was actually very symbolic for this for the um, school community. Thanks, so. Rich. Any other? No, Joe. Uh, just a quick correction. Uh, I believe the uh, practical that Dr. McCarthy referred to was actually referred to as an internship. And it was actually 300 hours. 330 hours. Yeah. And it was self, self uh, uh, created, self um, self planned. And uh, he did that in lieu of you know, pursuing credits, accredited university in that regard. Right, so. Thanks, Joe. Any other comments? Sharon, go ahead. I think Mary covered a lot of my action words there. <laughs> Great. Um, a couple others that I had on my list that and she may have already said and I, I missed because um, I was having trouble keeping up. But. Um, Relationships are at the forefront of everything that he does. He rallies people around a cause. He is a planner and a doer. He is honest and trustworthy and acts with integrity. He is humble. He connects people together and is authentic. Um, and I had many other action words, but you've, you've covered them, Mary. Um, Again, I, I tried to look hard and see, you know, where were the potential areas of challenge that may have come up in the conversation. Um, and what I, again, found was that um, it, the superintendent said he has lots of experience with the various, or with exposure to the various responsibilities of the job, but has not yet had the ultimate responsibility of, of the doing. Um, so he's had opportunities to practice. Um, and I have quotes. Um, he helps people to be their best selves. 
He is a big thinker and an out of the box thinker. And someone said, I think it was the superintendent said he was born for this role. Was yeah, it I have that quote too. It was Maria. Uh, so it wasn't the superintendent. It was somebody else. I think she was a parent who may have been a school committee member as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have the same quote. And regarding, this is not a direct quote, it's kind of a summation um, of what um, his superintendent said, but she said, he did not want to move into the role of a superintendent without first doing the work. So he created an internship program for himself <laughs> to gain knowledge and experience. And that included 300 hours or maybe 330 um, of supervised experience. Um, and I believe documented too. Recall correctly. Thanks, Sharon. Amy. Yeah, I think Mary hit on like almost everything that happened during those site visits. Yes. I I was able to join um, like a few hours of them, and um, I'm gonna try to focus on things that Mary and Sharon haven't or Rich haven't brought up, and also the answer to my question about what the biggest challenge would be for him if we were to hire for him as a superintendent since he hasn't been a superintendent. Um, when I asked uh, that to Anna Nolan, the superintendent of Natick, she said the biggest challenge would be school committee relations because he hasn't had to deal directly with school committee uh, members in his role as an assistant superintendent before. Um, and other answers I got to that question involved um, organizing his day and schedule and, and just the workload in general, but he was good at delegating and knew how to build a good team. Um, I had the same quote as Sharon that he was born for this role because of how he connects with people, his charisma, his interest in moving projects forward, and his leadership qualities. Um, the other thing that I wanted to highlight was uh, from the finance committee. Um, I don't know if he was the chairman or not, but he said, you know, um, he was involved with strategic planning and budget development, and um, that appeared to be a strength of his, um, and that he was also good at engaging the community in the building process for the middle school that, um, that I guess was just completed or is just about to open. So I think that's, um, the other thing that came up that I don't think has been highlighted by anybody is that he, um, he was involved with a literacy audit at their school district um, that involved world languages as well and um, and it, it just seems like he, the, the collective feedback was that he's data driven, um, you know, and, and likes to have data to support the decisions that he makes and he's able to, I think one of the quotes was, able to explain the drivers of the decisions that he makes um, and the complexities of the budgeting. There was like a whole discussion about complexities. Mm. So that's, Thanks, that's Amy. what I have to offer. All right, seems like that might be everything. So at this point, let's move on to our third candidate, Mr. Roche, and we can talk about what we heard at his site visits. Anybody want to start? Yeah, go ahead. I'll start because this is one that I spent the most time on, and honestly, I, I couldn't tear myself away from it. Um, just because I could feel the energy level through the screen, honestly, of the people that participated in that site visit. Um, mm -hmm. I have the most notes from this one as well um, because I was able to spend almost, I was there for almost the majority of it. And part of it was trying to give Mary and Sharon <laughs> a break. Um, but I'm, you know, the takeaway, I tried to do what Sharon did and, and summarize some of the words that just kept coming up over and over again. 
for Mr. Roche. Um, he's student focused, communicator. He deserves this opportunity. I heard that over and over again from each of the different focus groups. Relational, humble, um, extremely hard work ethic, a well-respected leader in the community. Students and teachers all rally around him. I heard the phrase that he changed my life more than once from students and from teachers. Um, he's committed to helping people grow. He's an innovator. People believe him. He's empowering. Um, dealing with any emergency, he's honest and capable. There was a story about a, a fire. I think he talked about it during his interview as well. Um, there was a story about um, a house fire too that came up that affected a student that he responded to immediately in offering help to that student's family. And the other thing I heard over and over again is that they didn't want to lose him. Um, so, you know, I came to learn during the site visit that uh, he was a finalist for superintendent at Fitchburg and was not selected, so I started asking questions to the different stakeholder groups about why that may be. If um, I kept hearing so many wonderful things, and the answer that I got was basically that he's such an excellent principal that um, that people, that, that there was a feeling that he couldn't be replaced. Um, he would be leaving too much of a, a hole in their community. Um, the other reason that was given by the school committee members that we met with was that the other candidate had more of a um, finance background and that was what the committee felt was needed for Fitchburg at that time. And feel free to correct me if, if you guys got something different from, from this. Um, I heard a lot of people talk about how he learned Spanish in two years to be able to connect with the diverse population at Fitchburg, which I just thought was amazing. Um, and, you know, I think I've heard, when I asked about challenges, um, that we that he would be facing if he were to be able to take the leap from principal to superintendent the first thing that was offered was that he wouldn't be around students that he loves um, that would be a challenge for him because he, he is so student focused um, that the other challenge that somebody mentioned for him would be to be able to bring the same level of energy and innovation to the superintendency that he does to being a principal. And um, I have a note about making data-driven decisions. But I, my note's not very good, so I'm not really sure what that was getting at. Um, so that's, that's my summary. Thanks, Amy. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go next. <coughs> so um, he's described as uh, honest, hardworking, um, incredible work ethic, um, focused on, on students, uh, and they've been doing a lot of work in, in Fitchburg to improve student outcomes. And, um, and, and Jeremy has taken a lot of that work and really run with it. Can I interrupt for a second? I'm getting feedback that people are having a hard time hearing you, Mary. Me? Yes. Oh. So. All right, I'll try. Why don't you take off your mask if you're uncomfortable? Yeah, take it off. We don't take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. No. <laughs> Just your mask. Hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. You asked for it. You got it. All right. Um, <laughs> Hardworking has an incredible work ethic. He's focused on on students, um, and Fitchburg has been doing a lot of work uh, with with a group called Focus Schools to improve student outcomes. And he has taken that and really run with it. Um, the graduation rate and attendance rates are at all time highs. Um, he is um, people described him as an all star thought partner and with his emphasis on equity. Um, he um, 
So the, the budgeting, he, he has the high school budgeting experience. He's also described as adaptable and having a growth mindset. mindset. Um, his, his loyalty to people um, was emphasized. Uh, and the collaboration, the internal collaboration that he does, he was, he was described as a leader who, um, when all kinds of things could be going around, on around him, and he's carrying a lot in his head, and yet somebody will stop him in the hall, that he can just um, look at them and not, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but there's a look that principals get when they're, they're listening to you, but they're not there. Um, and they weren't really saying it, but he's there. He is, he's there, and he's present. present. He, he is, um, he, student voice, as well as teacher voice, is very important to him. Um, let me see what else. There's, there's, there's lots. Um, he is, um, trying to He's, he has time for everyone somehow, and somebody said they think he must have a body double. <laughs> That's right. Because yes. how can he? How can he be there and he never be doing all this? He must never sleep. That's what, that's what they say. Maybe he takes naps and he's still he's still working. Um, he yeah does the body double stuff. Um, that he's. He brings a unique perspective, and he's, he's, people from the union, teachers, talked about how much he has um, learned uh, <laughs> about dealing with a very strong union, um, and the only, uh, one the union people said, the only thing, he doesn't really like confrontation, and that he's more a pleaser, um, but that he and this particular person have had some uh, very honest um, and loud uh, discussions that have always ended amicably. Um, and um, they said that he likes to talk a lot, but people like to hear him. And he learned quickly about the culture there, which used to be, it's not so much anymore at Fitchburg High, they went right to the contract. And so if a faculty meeting was supposed to last an hour, um, they, people would just get up and leave if a person went, went over. And so when he first came in, he didn't know that. And so um, Jeremy was talking and, and talking and talking, and he went <laughs> way beyond an hour. And um, out of politeness, um, don't, be, don't be left, but then when he was told afterwards, he, he was like chagrined, he didn't, he didn't know. Um, but then he quickly adjusted, so he made sure he didn't put himself or, or the faculty in that um, position again. Uh, but that was learning learning the culture, which he had done. I, we had students from from Fitchburg High School, and um, they were they were so amazing. And I have to say that I was I don't want to say that we're jealous, but if we could, what we don't have at the show, but is we don't have um, the diversity that Fitchburg High School has. And when you see these students uh, of color and other ethnic backgrounds um, talking about how they feel empowered and the success that they're having, um, and, and Jeremy is a, a big part of that. He brought in, um, which was a very wise idea, he brought in an honors academy. And so, so for those students who go in that, in that honors academy, I mean, they are high achieving students. And we know that a lot of the um, charter schools um, have really taken students from all of our districts, um, and you know, for things like math and science, mentioning no, no particular charter school. <laughs> but what you do is you take some of the high achieving students out of uh, the school environment, and that, you know, we want all students to succeed, but what happens when you do that is, you know, everything uh, kind of goes down. And so Jeremy found ways to have a lot of those students want to continue to be in Fitchburg, and they also have a STEM Academy, and, um, and what they're able to do for students with um, special needs and bringing them in, in inclusion as much as possible into both um, regular classes as well as all that they do in terms of extracurricular, um, like um, Best Buddies programs, and so, um, it was it was so admirable to hear about the, the work at um, at Pittsburgh High School and uh, and the 
just the incredible success that Jeremy has helped all of them. Uh, and the emphasis on team, teamwork and team players. At one point he said he, he hasn't had an original idea um, in his life, but what he does is he takes the, the good ideas from the team and, and he takes good ideas from other places, he researches, and then he, he builds on those. So I think. Thanks, Mary. So, that you might have something to well, I had, I had things to say uh, from other site visits, but you guys kind of said everything. Oh. So I didn't want to chime. No, no, it's good. It's, you, you, you covered everything. Um, I just want to um, share some of the things that resonated. And I'm not going to say much because, again, you guys, you guys really covered everything, which was great. Um, uh, Jeremy's superintendent said that he was one of the hardest working um, employees that he's ever met. Um, he also used the word loyal several times, um, talked about his work with um, um, social emotional learning and diversity, um, and that poisons him to be a leader in another district. Um, you know, Mary, you spoke about diversity. The diversity in the parent selection was incredible as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was um, people of all backgrounds, of all cultures, uh, who's first language was not English, and yet they had the courage to come up and just speak so effusively of him. Um, there was a police officer that zoomed in from the from his cruiser. From his, from the cruiser. <laughs> um, you know, there was someone from Fishbrook State that zoomed in from his, uh, his office, uh, parents uh, from home. Um, so some of, the, some of the quotes that kind of resonated with me were that he never forgets what it's all about. Um, that he will inspire your teachers, and they use the word trust um, an infinite number of times. Um, one of the parents said that he is a transformer of schools. Um, and then uh, it was the administration's time. Um, again, some of these things that kind of resonated me, with me. Uh, we never have to clean up um, when, when Jeremy's involved. Um, that he builds capacity for students, that he's um, and this one really stuck. He's committed to helping people grow. Um, just three more. Um, that he, um, one administrator identified that he was made an offer uh, for superintendency in another district, um, but he rejected it because he had already made commitments to his current district. Um, one of the administrators asked rhetorically, when dealing with a crisis, who else would you want to work with? Um, and that he has a proven track record of taking on challenges over and over and meeting them. Other than that, you guys covered everything. <clears throat> Anybody else have anything unique? I was also there, and um, I don't know that I have a whole lot to add, just like you said, except one thing that we heard from the students a lot is that he values student voice. And I just wanted to emphasize that because they did say that a couple of times. And two of the students we talked to were actually representatives to the Fitchburg School Committee. Mm -hmm. And they came, they were elevated from their student government organization that they call the Student Advisory Council. Um, hold on. So similar to what Mary was saying earlier, the, um, the union perspective was interesting. It, it sh showed us a very small sliver of something he had to work on. And they said that he has worked on it a lot and that his relationship with the union has evolved to what is now a great place. And that although they can be contentious at times, um, the union president said that is natural and to be expected. He said the only thing I would say is that, he, that he has to continue working on is that he has to delegate more. And they said a couple of times he has his hands in everything. And that as a superintendent, that would be um, very difficult for him. And that he is so rooted in the importance of relationships and keeping and, and maintaining a positive culture that he can sometimes be a pleaser, which leads him to avoid some harder conversations. Um, but the literacy coach said that he fosters a culture that is actually unreal, that belonging is there, and that he, he tries to help her have dif 
difficult conversation because she's a she's a coach, so she has to go into teachers' rooms and she has to talk to teachers about what they need to improve upon. She said he has helped her develop her skill around having difficult conversations because he knows that this is one of his vulnerabilities and because he's so vulnerable in his own personal journey, he's open to exploring how to be better. Thank you. Anybody else? I just want to add about the two students who are representatives to the school committee. We asked them if they stayed for the whole meeting. Yeah. And, and they said, uh, they said, well, you know, with the beginning of the meeting, and if there's something interesting, if it's good, if it's interesting, if there's debate, and then we stay. But, he said, but you know, if it gets really boring, yeah. <laughs> it's usually boring. <laughs> yes, we're yeah. talking about things we don't understand. Yeah, we just we just leave them. But they they were wonderful, absolutely yeah, wonderful. They really were. Yeah, one of them was a freshman too. I, think. I don't know. I think yeah. That. yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. A couple of the kids talked about how he had helped them get into college and actually access scholarships too. One uh, one student who was going to go, who had just been accepted to Harvard on a full ride. Um, so she was an exceptional kid, and yeah. yeah. So guys, uh, let's let's move to the next stage of this process. So there's one thing that I just wanted to go over. Actually, ask a question, Dorothy. When would you like to share information that you have? Uh, when you ask me to. Okay. So I think that at this point, we can perhaps move toward the stage of the process where we start ex um, sharing our opinions. And um, this will eventually lead us to a place where we do perhaps a ballot vote where we indicate our preferen preference. And you tell me if I'm veering off the well, path I just, here. I just have a question. I mean, do, do you want the additional feedback that I have yes. from the administrators before you start your I think so. You guys are, all had access to the survey data that came out of the focus groups. Mm -hmm. So hopefully yeah. you've perused that and you've gotten um, some information there. Yeah. So maybe Dorothy, it is best for you to share the information that you were able to glean from our administrative team across the three towns. And after that, then we can go start moving around the room, talking about who our preference is. The one thing that I do want to point out to you guys really quickly is that over here on the screen, we have the leadership profile that I hope the community will also um, keep in mind that this leadership profile basically sets the ground rules for what the community said they want in our next superintendent. And so you guys I'm sure have all looked at this document, but as we scroll down, there are a handful of, as you get a little bit lower, there are a handful of things that the community said they want in their next educational leader. And so we all know what is in here. Um, but it perhaps is a good idea just to quickly repeat or peruse. Maybe, re maybe repeat because the people at home can't. Maybe just highlight some of those <coughs> pieces. OK. So one of the things that the the community said they want is somebody with a um, superintendent experience. And if not superintendent experience, they said assistant superintendent experience, and that was a high percentage. I believe it said 73% of the respondents said that. They want somebody who is a strong communicator, and this is a two-way endeavor. They also said that they, oh, this is about the administrative uh, experience, but also that this person can develop and direct the strong administrative team that we currently have. Um, this person should be able to articulate and implement a vision of the district and be able to solve problems as they arise. This person should be able to collaborate with others in identifying problems and then work collaboratively towards solutions. So this is some of the criteria that we we're hoping for in our next leader, communication skills, interpersonal skills, um, evidence of creating a positive culture, one of trust and respect, being collaborative, expertise in developing a long-term district vision and strategy, a track record of valuing, promoting, valuing and promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion for students, staff, and the community, and knowledge around school budgeting, fiscal development, implementation, and oversight and in communication of budget issues to the broader public. So 
so that is the leadership profile. This is how we are to speak in terms of our candidates. Clearly, we have three candidates who are strong in, in a variety of ways. We want to be deciding, does the candidate rise to the leadership profile? And if so, who rises the furthest in their own personal resume? So Dorothy. OK. So I, I spoke with 15 of your administrators today. Thank you. Kind of wondering why I said I would do that last night. <laughs> <time. laughs> um, <laughs> Um, so first of all, two things. There was great appreciation on the fact that, that you had asked to reach out and, and get some more information, thought, and feedback from them. Um, and they also expressed that they are there to support whoever comes in. Um, so I asked them first about what they saw as some of the primary needs of the district at this point in time. Um, and so I just want to sort of recap the different things that they said. They talked about relationships from several perspectives. Um, the superintendent's relationship with the school committee. Um, the next superintendent is going to be working with a school committee that is a young group um, and large. Um, so the, uh, the next superintendent has to be able to understand and structure the relationship so that everyone understands the boundaries of their roles and that the relationship can be productive for the district. Um, communication and work together, um, they felt, could be channeled sometimes in a more organized manner. Um, and developing that relationship is really critical to stability of the leadership of the district. Um, the relationship with the leadership team, superintendent's relationship with the leadership team. Among that team, of course, which includes the superintendent, um, is important to the team, right? Um, they describe themselves as a cohesive, collaborative team that wants to continue to grow professionally, wants to feel re-energized, um, to focus on, on the work after the pandemic and other uh, events that have happened in the district that have necessarily um, taken some uh, focus uh, away from the vision and growth of the district. Mm -hmm. um, so they're looking for someone who can support them in that work, not someone that they have to support in that work. Um, to, you know, to a great degree. Um, and they, of course, realize that there's going to be some need to support whoever comes in in some capacity. Mm -hmm. um, um, there's, and there's also um, some thought of wanting to make sure that the building leaders, including the new high school principal, are able to have that site-based autonomy um, that building leaders should have. Mm -hmm. um, and then relationships with the three towns. Um, being a regional district, they realize is complex and the ability to establish and maintain those relationships with the three town governments, um, particularly as relates to the budget, is an important priority for the superintendent. And within the community, the need um, to work with uh, the community to um, create some, um, some healing and um, some maybe uh, calming of some of the um, rhetoric that's been part of a lot of places during the pandemic. Um, vision is really important to them. Um, understanding where the, uh, the district has been and the need to conceptualize and articulate a, a pre-K through 12 vision um, that will carry the district forward. Um, and at this structure, they feel that there's that need to sort of turn the page, re-energize, and unify people around that division for the future and to rebuild some morale. Um, in areas of the budget, um, again, building that solid relationship with the towns is important, but also knowledge um, of building a budget at the district level, understanding the intricacies of municipal financing and regional budgets, um, and then maybe even a need for sort of less, as the budget gets developed within the district, uh, some need for some less siloing and looking at the, the budget in a more district level um, approach. Building project. Of course, um, that's been talked about a lot this week. Um, it, it's large on people's minds, and they, they see that there's a need for central office people um, who have a, a, a major role in that to be able to be supported in that role by the next superintendent, um, as well as the ability for the superintendent to be advocating um, for the project as things move forward. And then there was some mention of having some legal acumen. Um, knowledge of complex situations, the legal ramifications of some of those actions, um, and when it's appropriate to bring in legal counsel. So I asked them, sort of taking that picture, 
um, how they felt that, that the candidates would um, respond or address some of the issues that came up. Um, and they talked uh, about two of the candidates and, and how they would respond. Um, they, uh, they talked about the importance of the ability to have that um, pre-K pre through 12 lens and that district level experience that would allow that. Um, the, um, experience with the district level budget, building projects, um, and having that um, ability to build and support and implement that vision, that pre-K through 12 vision. Um, people saw Mr. Downing as showing experience with that lens by the thoughtful questions that he asked while, while they had a brief time to talk to him. Um, they felt that he demonstrated a depth of knowledge and, and readiness. Um, and there was also a sentiment that his questions showed that he had done his research on the district um, and that he was able to make connections and engage with people. And then the other aspect that came up, of course, was relationships as being really important. Um, that ability to bring people together and energize them to move forward um, and it, you know, for the future of the district. And uh, Mr. Roach's name came up more in that, in that area of things. Um, people, from, they're familiar with him, right? They know his work, um, know his strengths in that area, um, and see him as someone who can bridge divides, bring people together. Um, and you know, he has a knowledge of the district. People also have a knowledge of the work that he's done in, in Fitchburg that kind of supports that same, I mean, you all talked about it, right? That same ability to, to make connections, um, to bring people together, to be that you know, caring and supportive um, person. Um, and, and um, knowledge that he doesn't have uh, the same resume, obviously, um, but know that he has a willingness to. Um, so, in, you know, in asking about the, you know, the, how people would address that, it was really those two names and those themes that came forward in, in people that, you know, in, the, in their reflections on the, um, the candidates. Um, to bear in mind, they had limited time. They, some of them pointed out, you know, we did have limited time to talk to them, but these were our, these were our takeaways. Um, many of them had said they had either, uh, many of them said they had watched the interviews too, so. Thank, Thank you so much, much Thank you. Thank you. That's very helpful. <clears throat> so friends, um, one thing that I wanted to remind everybody of is that <clears throat> As we move forward and we vote, obviously a candidate must emerge with a majority of votes because there are 10 of us in the room. That majority is six. If there were to be any abstentions and people decide that they do not want to participate in the vote, that will reduce the number that we need for a majority. So if we were to reduce down to nine, then we would need five votes in favor of a candidate, and so on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving right along. So everyone, this is the point at which we can start expressing our own opinions and um, talk to one another. I will not force anyone on to the stage, but feel free to volunteer. And feel free to think. It's okay, too. Um, Do you want to start? I, I am debating starting. <laughs> um, I, I, I did prepare my thoughts and kind of like a speech. And I think it's appropriate for me to start because I'm torn on, on how to make this decision. Um, and I got some, I think that it sounded kind of, I can understand better hearing the feedback from all the people and especially the central office administrators because I think our candidates have different strengths that check different boxes. So, um, you know, while none of the candidates that were presented to us have ever been superintendents, um, there's no doubt in my mind that Kirk Downing is well qualified to be our next superintendent because he's served as an assistant superintendent for three years. 
He completed the internship of 300, you know, of 300 hours under Anna Nolan, who it seems like an excellent superintendent and an expert in her field. He has experience with building a flagship middle school for Natick in partnership with the NSBA. Um, and you know, those, those check some of the boxes that we've just reviewed together. He would also be a mentor to our central office staff and bring lessons learned from Natick where he implemented a data dashboard system for each, system, for each student among other initiatives to our district. In his interview, he stated that Neshoba is a fertile ground ripe with nutrients, and he thinks he would be a good fit for us. So, you know, I think we'd be lucky to have him serve as our next superintendent if we offer him the position and he accepts. However, I worry about his ability to connect with our communities in a meaningful way that will help us build back trust and form a partnership with the full school committee so we can support his vision for Neshoba. I also can't escape the feeling that uh, Jeremy Ro Roche will truly inspire us, and especially the students, to achieve our mission of helping each student achieve their fullest potential. Mr. Roche may never have served as a superintendent, but what, from, what I've, from what I've learned from attending site visits with staff, administrators, students, and school committee members, and probably more, is that he's such an excellent principal that Fitchburg was really not willing to let him leave that role. His focus on students, and what's best for every student, his connection to them, their respect for him, was impactful to me. His choice to go to Fitchburg, in an urban district where high achieving students were leaving to go to other schools, and turn it around based on an ambitious goal to be a top 10 high school in Newsweek, but it was also focusing on making it a welcoming place for his diverse student body. It makes me think that he can be the transformational leader we need to build a new cult culture at Neshoba. And for me, this is the time to build a new vision and culture at Neshoba. We have a new high school principal, a new mascot, a new school committee, a new school committee chairperson, and we will be building or renovating a new high school. Um, furthermore, when I reached out to uh, Bolton's finance chair committee to ask him about his, uh, and I, I got his approval to, to say this, um, you know, one of the concerns with, with uh, Jeremy Roche is, you know, his lack of building, a lack of experience in building a regional budget for a regional school district. Brian um, stated that, you know, experience matters, but so does the approach. And in fact, that mattered more to him than the experience. And Jeremy's approach is genuine. He's to the point, he's reflective, he's inspirational, and he's honest. I also think he'd be loyal to Neshoba and committed to the long-term goal he stated of making Neshoba the best district in the state. This would not be a stepping stone for him, as it might be for Mr. Downing, and if we're being asked to take a leap of faith on a candidate who hasn't been a superintendent before, I'd be willing to give Mr. Roche the chance. But this is a difficult fault for me to take because I see the strengths and weaknesses of both candidates. And I think what it comes down to is my heart votes for Mr. Roche, my mind votes for Mr. Downing, and I'm looking for insights from my fellow committee members to help me decide which wins. Thank you, Amy. Yep. I'll say. Would anyone else like to go next? Yeah. So uh, we were talking, looking at the leadership profile and, um, and, and asking, you know, which of the, the three candidates would rise to the top. And to me, that's, that's Mr. Kirk um, um, without a doubt. Um, he, he fits the leadership profile. Uh, he has the K-12, he has the communication and personal skills, collaborative leadership style. Um, he has expertise in developing a long-term, the district vision. That's something he's really good at, and so many people corroborated that, the, the visioning, the big picture, but he's able to hold the big picture while also knowing how to, to work 
in the everyday, in, in the attention to detail. Certainly at the track record of uh, promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, what they're doing too in, in Native, uh, they have the benefit of a METCO program and a METCO coordinator, now, and they have for 55 years. And, and I, as I said um, to the METCO uh, coordinator, you know how fortunate they are, they are to have her and to have those students there. And one of the reasons I know is my mother was a, um, an English teacher at Newton South, and Newton South had a METCO program for many, many years. And um, the advantage of, of having METCO students, not just for the METCO students, but for all the, the students in, in these predominantly um, white communities that, that really need to be able to have the advantage of, um, of diversity and understanding um, and interacting with people that don't, don't look just like you. Um, so that, that that would be part of it. And, um, and also that he, if the equity audit that they've done there, he's, he has all, all of this. Um, I was reading some, I, we all read everything that the, um, that the community and faculty and, and people <coughs> and the responses in the survey. And some people found that he was um, too sure of himself. Um, you know, does he, is he really, you know, too glib? Um, but having done all the work uh, that, I, that I've done and experienced, I wish everyone on this committee could have been at all the site visits and talked to all the people because then you would know that part of the reason that he, and he did explain to us that he likes to talk. <laughs> and he talked about his family and how all of them would like to talk. But what's behind that talk uh, is, a, is the way he connects with people, um, relationship building, a sense of humor. But he has had those experiences. He knows what he's talking about. When we experience something, when we've done it, we can talk about it, and we can talk knowledgeably about it because it's part of our experience. And that is part of, of what um, he has done. He hasn't applied other places to be superintendent. He applied here, and he did something that I found just re really pretty remarkable. He came out here on the weekend and drove around and went to every single school and, um, and looked at the schools and talked to people. He had already talked to people um, because he was trying to figure out whether this would be a good fit for him. Went to the Bolton Bean, he just talked to people and got a sense of the community. And the more he experienced, the more he felt that this is a place that, that I could be. Um, he wasn't really, he wants to be a superintendent, but he, he's not throwing his name and his resume um, out to other districts. In fact, it, it was a superintendent who suggested, you know, this looks pretty interesting. Just look in the showroom, just because knowing where he is and that he's so well poised. The leap from a principal position to superintendent position is quite a leap. It's, it's big. And, um, and, and that has been acknowledged. It's not the same. I, I've been a principal. And I have his experience as a principal, and I know <clears throat> that students are at the center of that, that students are front and center when you are a principal. And they're right there. As you become a superintendent, your, your scope and your um, realm of, of responsibility widens. The students are still right there at the center, but you're not interacting with them the way you did when you were their principal, and you don't know them. But they are still there. They are right at the center. But you're, you've got, you've got the students. You've got the faculty. You've got the, the administrative team. You've got central office. You've got the whole community. You've got each of the town governments. And that is what being a superintendent of schools is. So from principal to superintendent, big leap. Assistant superintendent to superintendent, not such. It's not a leap. It's a step. You're already there, pretty much. You got to step up. And it's going to be different because everything is your responsibility. But people in an assistant superintendent position um, have a good idea of what they're moving into and that they, they, they want and, and want to uh, run toward it and be part of it. And, and that's what um, Kirk wants to do. I, um, I just, the more I find, as I listen to him the first time uh, with the screening committee, I had this feeling as an educator, and I've been retired six years. I felt as though I wanted to go and work with him. 
because of his uh, philosophy on, on students. You know, he talked about Ross Green, I don't think he's mentioned that uh, other times, but if students can do well, if they can do well, they will. And so if they're not doing well, then look through the response to intervention um, program, you're, you're figuring out why is the student not doing well? And you're getting the remediation in. It doesn't always have to be through special education. And it's a lot of the same things that special education would do. I want everybody to remember that we're not hiring a director of special education. Our special education in this district is not going to change. We, that is well established here. We're hiring a superintendent of schools who will oversee all the directors. And, but I, and, and I'm glad, I just have to say, I'm glad for the emphasis on our students with special needs that people are looking at because they absolutely deserve it and, they, and, they, and oftentimes in districts, <coughs> students in regular education are pitted against students in special education because of, a lot of times because of cost. That's not what it is here. And I, and I like that, that people are advocating for all students and making sure that we highlight that our students with special needs get <coughs> everything that they need. But not everybody, sometimes parents just go to, uh, you know, I want my child tested, I want um, an IEP. And if there is a, if everybody has been trained in the response to intervention and child study groups, then you find out, you look at that child and you find out by looking at um, all, all the assessments that you have, where is it that, that the child has some, some need for more um, instruction, for more strategies, and let's see what we can do with that. And that's happening in elementary schools all across uh, you know, the Commonwealth, as well as here, that students aren't just taught all together um, the same way, things are differentiated. And, and I'm, I'm confident um, that he would be doing you know, really good work in that, in that realm. He knows we're gonna build, chances are we're gonna build a high school. He's been through that. Uh, and it's a huge process and it's attention to detail. Somebody said in, in my notes, he knows how to speak, M-S-B-A-E's. He knows the language, I some other people heard that too. He knows that. Uh, you can't replicate, you can read about it, and, but until you get in there and start to deal with it, and then he talked about what their, the Kennedy um, Native Middle School, and what they have there. I wanted everything, I wanted to go to that school. <laughs> think about what they have there. Now I know that we may not be able to do that, um, but we need to have, when he, when he talks about a school for the future for our Neshoba students, to last 50 years, and to be able to vision, and to look forward, and to think, what will they need? And how can we really provide all that for that for them? Because a new high school is for the students, but it's also for the whole community. It's a center. That the show with new high school, I hope it's a high school, you know, the high school, not just a renovation, um, is for is for our, our students, our and grandchildren, but it's also for all three of our communities. And have someone with the experience and also the larger vision of what that could be. Uh, I think it's a, an incredible opportunity for us. And I would just urge um, my, my fellow members to think about this. Um, and that he is just so clearly the person who, who should be the next superintendent of schools. He's the best fit. He will bring the whole district um, to, a, to a new level. Thank you, Mary. Steve. I'm going to kick this off. That's fine. Being the curmudgeon in this room, <laughs> I'm going to say something that some of you may not believe, but I happen to agree with Amy this evening. Wow. I'll leave it. I am as well divided in my thoughts about selecting someone. I wish we could have both of them. <laughs> yes. Each of them in, in charge of their own piece of the job. But it's our job as a school committee and probably the only time any of us will ever get to do this selection process to try to come up with an, one individual. I agree with Amy that my, my mind says 
go with Mr. Brown. And my heart says, go with Mr. Roach. The problem I have is trying to figure out which one is going to rule. <laughs> and I probably won't make a decision until I actually have to put a pen, piece of paper down and, and write a name. Um, but I, I, like I said, I do want to remind us, this is one of the three legal responsibilities that we all share, selecting a superintendent. And this is what we get elected for, to follow the laws that's, that govern school committees. And I'll tell you, I was up at 4 o'clock this morning going through my, having phrases going through my head about what I could say tonight. And I don't really talk too much in here. I, there are other groups I talk, they, they tell me I, I, got, I talk too much. But we really have to decide in our own minds what the prime need of this school district is. Do we need someone who can, I'm going to use a very old phrase, and it's not, I don't want it to seem um, prejudicial at all, but do we need a touchy-feely kind of leader, or do we need one that will be um, somewhat of an opponent at times, not only to the various constituencies that they serve, but also to this, which is their primary boss and their primary constituency. I haven't made a decision yet. I don't know when I'll make a decision. Hopefully it'll be before the end of the evening, and I'm sure I will do that. But then, of course, will come, you know, what is it, the, the, the four stages of grief that, you, or you, that you've made the wrong decision. <laughs> but um, I, 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 am, I am torn, and I, as I'm sure many of my colleagues around this table are, and um, we're, all we can do is select the person we think is best and support that person to the best of our ability on a proactive on a positive basis. Thank you. I'd like to go next, if anyone at all. And if you don't want to <clears throat> ex provide explanation, perhaps you could just indicate your preference. Okay, Karen, go ahead. Um, I, I, what has been said already is sort of this heart versus head was a perfect way to say it, or um, George, you said relationships versus sort of that experience piece. Um, and I had many, many of the same thoughts between the, these two particular candidates. Um, but I really, and especially being a new school committee member who just this morning on Monday, um, <laughs> I really, really tried to go back to what's on the screen here. Because for me, this is coming, this came from the community. This came from the um, focus groups, and it came from the screening committee. So I really tried to use this and um, to sort of guide my thinking on it. And um, for me, even though there's that sort of heart head and they both have heart, and they both have a lot to offer in terms of you know their their vision and intelligence and all of those pieces. Uh, I feel like uh, Mr. Downing is the best fit. I feel like he was the most forward thinking in terms of his vision, um, and that he has the experience that I went through and saw in this document that the community said, "This is what we want," and our next superintendent. Um, the other candidates absolutely have vision, and there's no doubt that if they, if, if um, Mr. Roche became superintendent, I'm sure he would learn on the fly and learn on the job and, 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 and do well. But I feel like we really have to hit the ground running, and that Mr. Downing has the range of experience to do so. Um, he has that 
He's been in classrooms, he's been admi administration, he's been central office. He's done the budgeting, he's done the building project, um, he has the building project experience. And I fully understand that many people feel that connection to Mr. Roche, that he was their principal or he had their children, and that, that matters, and that excitement that he brings matters, but I feel like we're, I just kept coming back to this document, and, try, and for me, you know, it's asking for somebody who can direct a leadership team and implement a vision and communicate clearly and has experience. Um, and I feel like it's also kind of, uh, supported by some of that administrative feedback as well. Um, and I also, I'm so glad you brought up some of the special education piece because when I listen to Ms. Nunan talk about um, the reduction in special education numbers at his school, I, I, and I know we got, you know, there were a couple of emails about that piece. I think I interpreted that very differently than I saw in those emails. I think some people interpreted that as, oh my gosh, we're, he wants to cut kids off of IEPs. If a student is eligible for an IEP, it's because they have a, a, diagnose, a diagnosis in a disability category, and they need, in, they need that instruction in order to make effective progress in school. That is the law. The superintendent can't change that law. But what he was talking about is all the things that can come before that evaluation process that can happen in kindergarten and first grade and keep going, that response to intervention and using data and using professional learning groups to analyze that data and make instructional plans for kids. It makes it so several, many of those kids don't ever get to the point that they need an evaluation because it's been remediated. So I think my perspective of what he was talking about, it, it was great for me to hear because it's something I believe strongly in, but you can't have special education kind of be the only game in town. And I'm not saying it's the only game in town in Neshoba. But there's certainly work to be done in terms of um, interventions for students that are offered in different ways. So when those numbers are going down, it's because those kids are getting that intervention that are never hitting that point. They're not, we're not waiting to fail, and then they're being evaluated, and then they're being picked up. So I just wanted to bring that up because I think some parents may have heard that and thought, oh my gosh, he wants to bring the numbers down, he just wants to pull kids off IEPs. And that, that is not what I think the intention of that piece was. And it's not the law. So, I just want, was glad you brought that up. But anyhow, I, I feel like going back to this document and really thinking it through from what the community has put forward as their um, priorities, um, Mr. Dunn would be my first choice. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Go ahead, Sharon. So I just want to start, thank you, Karen, for, if for explaining that a little bit more, and Mary for bringing that up, because that was the impression that I had as well, the understanding that I had of what he was saying. And I think that if you are a teacher or you work in the field, that is very clear. But if you are, are not um, and you are listening to that um, statement, that it does feel like a taking away. And, in, and rather, it is actually a giving before, mm -hmm. um, that you're catching those children before um, before they fail up into um, special education and you are catching them by recognizing what they need, what their challenges are and what they need and giving it to them before it becomes a, a challenge that is bigger. Mm -hmm. um, you said that much more eloquently than I did. Um, but I think that is a really important point and thank you for clarifying that. I also, I hear what you, what everyone is saying about um, Jeremy, um, people know him, people have a rapport with him. I think that muddies the waters of for us a little bit because if, so in, in one respect, I feel like if we did not know him, this would be a clearer conversation because we wouldn't have that pre, that knowledge already of him. Um, on the other hand, people know him, so we start at a different place, right, because there's a connection already. Um, I did not know him when he was at Neshoba. That was before my children were involved um, at Neshoba. Um, and I just totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, gosh, I hate that. Well, that's what happens to me at my age. You're not, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, are you just saying I'm aging prematurely? <laughs> um, I heard you saying, Sharon, that we start at a different place with him. And you didn't know him. I didn't know him. Um, I feel like there are people in the community that have a connection to him because they remember him. Um, but it's been 10 years, and, and I guess I would say, too, right, things have changed in 10 years. Are we the same as we were 10 years ago? Um, you know, I would say no, but I wasn't, in, I wasn't there, so I, I can't speak to that. Um, I do think, though, that when I look at a bigger picture and, um, and look at this document, I do agree that Mr. Downing fits the criteria very point by point. He marks things off. Um, he, he meets what we, what we said we were looking for, what the community said they were looking for in a leader. Um, he has and I had the advantage of being on the screening committee, so I have seen him twice in an interview, and in addition, was able to go to the site visits. He has an authenticity about him and a genuineness about him. Um, he has an ability to connect, which I, I think he can build the relationships, which is what's coming from you know people saying, my heart says this and my head says this, right? Because we want in our heart to have the relationship. I think he can make those relationships. I think he has the experiences that are going to be supportive of the different um, administrators and, and the different teams in the district. Um, I think he has experiences that are going to help to move us forward. Um, and he said something the other night that just really, uh, I have to find it because it was just okay, flipping all my pages around because I'm so super organized. Um, he said, we are in this um, right now, at this time, and we have a chance to blow the doors off. And I, I just thought, to me, it, it gives me chills just to think about it, right? We are poised, and, and this came up in one of our meetings earlier, where we were talking about the district and the improvements and, and things that have been happening and saying this district is poised to take off, right? We are in a position where we are ready to go. Um, and, and I think that Kirk is the person, Mr. Downing is the person that can, can take us there. He can help us take off and, and create, build upon what we have that's really good and create a vision for something that's even better. Thank you, Sharon. <coughs> Madam Chairman, are you looking for somebody to say something? Sir, I am. I'll, I'll be happy to say something. Please do so. And for usual, he talks about in his he talks about being in the promotion. I think I have that oh. from Mr. Drumacy. Um, contrary to my colleagues here, I'm not torn the least. I know exactly who I'm going to vote for, and I knew exactly who I was going to vote for the minute I heard his credentials. Um, but I am going to preface my remarks by doing something that's somewhat unpopular in 2021, and I'm going to quote from the Bible, paraphrase from the Bible. There's a phrase on the book of Jer Jeremiah that talks about a leopard being unable to change its spots. Leopards simply cannot change its spots. And while I was impressed with Mr. Downing's presentation, he was uh, very polished and whatnot, I couldn't disagree more with what my colleagues said about the gentleman. One is this issue about him being assistant superintendent, and that puts him in a better position to take on a superintendency. I disagree. If he was in such a great position to take on the superintendency, as an assistant superintendent, I would suggest respectfully that one would need 300 hours of internship practicum. That being said, what was most disturbing to me when I walked listened to his responses to the questions was his response to my particular question when we talked about special education. I'm not here to divine what he was, what, what's going to happen in the future. I'm just going to use his own words. He talked about, you know, when you go through the flow charts and the data and you examine the student, and you determine if the student has a disability and whether that student's demonstrating deficits at school. And are those deficits a result of the disability? He says, we must answer this question, yes, yes, yes. And that's a big moment in time that can't be run to too quickly. I'm sorry, but 20% of our student body is special ed. And this is not a situation where we can go, he says, go back in time to look at the point 
They start to demonstrate skills before they were failing. A child is what a child is. A leopard cannot change its spots. And I think that there is a goodly number of people in this district who have children who have special, who have, are on IEPs, who are deemed special education. And I think that this sort of language is disconcerting. And it disconcerts me, and I think it will disconcert a lot of people in our district. And I know that I've heard from a lot of people uh, in Lancaster, and to be frank, they're supporting Mr. Roach, and I do as well. So on that end, I would support Mr. Roach for the superintendency. Thanks, John. Thank Take it away, Brett. Um, you know, we were presented with three great candidates, um, and thanks again to the you know, folks who put the time into it. Uh, I'm putting my support behind Mr. Roach. Um, I like what he had to say about diversity and equity within his, his district. I liked what he had to say about uh, how he supports special education. Uh, I wasn't very impressed with Mr. Downing and what he had to say uh, and how he's reducing his numbers. Um, you know, as far as not having experience as superintendent, that can all be learned. There's, there's, all that stuff can be learned. And, and we have a great leadership team in place to assist whoever ends up in that spot. That I am confident of. So, you know, Mr. Downing having super, an assistant superintendent, that, that's fine, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, and that's, I think that's where he lost, where he lost me was with this, the, the special education component of it. Um, but Mr. Roach is, I think he's, he's got my support. Thanks, Brad. Okay, I'll go. Um, I have such a profound level of respect for this community right now. Just the level of thought and the level of consideration and attention to detail. Um, this is probably the, uh, this is probably my best meeting that I've ever been to. Um, in terms of how much dedication and, and work and time that has gone into this, this really big decision. Um, there are a lot of differences um, between who I feel are the two candidates that I would choose from, uh, Mr. Downey and Mr. Roach, and yet there are a lot of similarities. Um, they, as you said, Amy, they, they, they do check different boxes, but they, they, they check similar boxes too. They both have a rich variety of experience in academia. Um, they both really value children and put children first. Um, Mr. Downing had his head shaved by a student, Mr. Roach probably shaves his head often, so there's some, <laughs> <laughs> there's some similarities there too. I don't want to say that they're totally different. Um, Mr. Downing, when he came, I felt like, and I wrote these in my notes, I kind of wrote everything regularly, and when I had something that really kind of popped into my head, I typed it in bold. Um, to me, Mr. Downing spoke as an administrator, and at the same time, he spoke as a teacher, and at the same time, he spoke as a parent, and in doing so, I felt like he spoke as a leader. Um, and I think that as a district, we would be extremely lucky to have this candidacy. I think his presentation was polished, it was well thought out, and I mean this as a compliment when I say that it felt like he was very well prepared for each question, as if he had prepared for each question. Um, Mr. Downing values data, he values communication, um, he values trust and growth, and these are all things that I also value. He. Uh, at the same time that he has rich experience, he also identifies some of his own limitations, which I really respect. Uh, he values data, student data, 
enrollment data, data collection, data dissemination, data sharing, and using data to drive decisions. Um, I am enamored with his pre-K through 12 experience, that he started off as an elementary school teacher, that he was an elementary principal, uh, and then moved up um, uh, to where he is now. I, I think he has the broad view um, that uh, a superintendent should have, uh, and he has presence. Um, parents see him and kids see him all the time, um, by their own account. And I think in many ways he is the safe bet. Um, on the other hand, I would say that Mr. Roach spoke as an administrator, as a teacher, as a parent, and therefore as a leader, and we would be lucky to have his candidacy as well. Um, I wrote down that Mr. Roach also valued data, trust, and growth, his own humility, and relationships. Um, he values not diversity, not just equity, but a sense of belonging. He has rich experience and he identifies his own limitations. Um, just this afternoon, I believe that we, uh, the school committee got, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, the endorsement of Mr. Roach by, by CPAC um, over our email. Um, so in many ways, he's the safe bet. So safe bet in different ways because he's a known quantity. He has relationships in this district. He has roots in this district. And people know who he is. They know where he comes from. They know what his focus is. Now we go back about um, 15 months or so, um, this whole COVID uh, debacle taught me that um, rituals and routines matter. And it also taught me that probably more than anything, relationships matter. Relationships between children and their, their teachers, between teachers and teachers, children and their parents. Um, and, and Mr. Roach strikes me very clearly as a relationship guy, and relationships matter to him. Um, and we talk about his deficits as um, uh, uh, an, an administrator, that he doesn't have the experience as a superintendent or even as a, an assistant superintendent, and where does that leave us as a district? Again, Mr. Roach invests in relationships, and relationships develop a sense of familiarity. Familiarity builds that all-important sense of trust. And what does that trust give him? That trust gives him the latitude to learn um, as he navigates his way through his first and second years uh, in the superintendency. Um, I also spoke to several members of my own community, um, and I emailed them and texted them all day, and they shared me their thoughts. And I also got in touch with an administrator from town, Mr. Dunlow, um, and I said, do you have concerns uh, about his uh, lack of experience with the budget? And he said the same thing, very similar to what uh, Brian had told Amy, that um, given who he is and the strengths that he builds as an individual and the building of relationships, that I'm paraphrasing, but that this is someone that he could work with, that we could get through that, we could get beyond that, that, that he has a team, right? that he has a town administrator, and that he has a FinCom that he can lean on from three different communities, and that we could get through those, uh, those growing pains. So I think, that, I think that the relationship piece gives him the ability to fill in the deficits that he might have in experience because it can garner a sense of trust, not just amongst teachers, not just amongst parents, but amongst, um, amongst kids and in the town. And, and I just want to remind everyone that over the past 13, 14, 15 months, this district has experienced um, a, a sort of a dissolution of relationships with our towns, um, with uh, members of select boards, with town administrators, and um, with the Tri-Town. And um, while I so respect everything that you've said about um, Mr. Downing and, and Mary, everything you've said about Mr. Downing, and I just respect his, his application to this position, um, 
I feel as if this is an opportunity to pull someone in who can regenerate and kickstart those relationships because those relationships matter. A superintendent has to work with students, with parents, with community members, a school committee, and the towns and municipalities. And I think it's time for us to start healing those relationships back up. And for me, um, as, as, as much as I feel that Mr. Downing really knocked it out of the park, I feel like um, Mr. Roach is who we need at this moment in time uh, for where we are poised to be as a district. So before we move on, I just wanted to let the community know that I think the email we received today was not from the CPAC, but was from the CPAC chair. My mistake. Which is fine. I just don't want us to, to wrongfully speak for an entire group of parents. So just to correct the record, um, the sender of the email was speaking as I. Um, but nonetheless, she did send that email. Okay, so uh, I thank you all for sharing your thoughts here. I did strategically wait to hear what you had to say. Um, but my mind was made up um, after hearing Mr. Downing speak. Um, I think Jeremy is quite impressive. He's very um, effusive, you know, clearly a, a great leader, somebody that's valued in our community. But in terms of experience and vision, I think Kirk is, or Mr. Downing is, the person that this organization needs. We're already in a good place. I feel like Brooke has left our, 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 our uh, district in a good place. Um, and there's a strong administrative team that's already here. And so we need somebody that's gonna be able to take it to the next level. And so, I, I mean, I appreciate the concerns, certainly on the, on the, um, the SPED perspective. Um, but for me, um, looking at the profile, Kirk is the person that sticks out for me, and I think he'll be able to mentor and bring our, the, all the administrators in our organization, by extension, the faculty, the students, the community, and just take it to the next level. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. I think I'm the last one to go. So I really appreciate everything that everyone was saying, very much so. Um, I want to start by actually saying um, that my heart is a little broken that the conversation around SPED is where it is right now. And clearly, that needs to be cleared up because we actually have differing interpretations of what we think he said, um, Mr. Downing said the other night. I actually, um, as a teacher, similar to Sharon and Karen, I actually interpreted it like you guys did, that he was celebrating RTI, or response to intervention, which is the goal. The goal um, in special education is that students eventually get to a point where they don't need, um, or that they, they come off of their individualized education plan. And what I heard him saying is that he wants us to be so good instructionally that the remediation strategies we insert for children at such young ages are what they need to be successful and that we don't actually need to move through uh, the evaluation process. And that's actually in my training. That's what they want. That's, that's kind of the mode. And so I, that's what I heard him say. And um, if he were to be appointed as our superintendent, I think that he would need to address those concerns immediately. And I believe that he would. So I just want to um, speak to my fellow community, uh, committee members and community members. There are a few things that I'm thinking about. Um, of course, this profile that our community created so long ago, it seems now, is, is high on my mind. And so I believe that he has, uh, that Mr. Downing has more experience than Mr. Roche. And that that K-12 experience and his broad view of the work is critical for our district at this moment in time. Um, I also
also hear what Dorothy was explaining to us earlier from our admin team. I think that what Dorothy said, and I paraphrase, is that our administrative team is so dynamic, so amazing, such a strong group of people. They want somebody to mentor them. They want somebody to be their mentor and that they will do whatever is required of them and serve faithfully for whomever we choose, but that that is important to them, that they have somebody who is going to elevate them. Um, and you know, I think about our central office folks and our current assistant superintendent and how, what an amazing leader he is and you know, what do our administrators need at this moment in time, these fantastic people. And in my mind, as fantastic as Mr. Roche is, I don't know that he can mentor our administrative team. I think that our administrative team would be in a position of mentoring him for some time, although he's so dynamic that he would eventually, I am sure, become um, you know, a mentor to future administrators. But here's my chief concern. I don't want our administrative team to feel like they're not learning and that they're not progressing in their own uh, professional life to make things better for the kids. So I, I'm interested in having somebody as our superintendent who can continue to mentor our fantastic admin team and make all of them feel challenged. Um, the MSBA experience is critical in my mind. And there were two candidates who um, really did not have the experience for the MSBA. And clearly Mr. Downing had things to say about that that were fantastic. He understood the construction, the construction manager at risk process. He has experience with that. He's on a building committee right now. He speaks the language. And MSBA is actually so, you all know this, it's so important that we have somebody with experience to propel us in that regard. Um, he has regional experience, Mr. Downing does. He actually was a principal in Dover, and uh, you know, dover Sherburn is a, is a regional district, so he has that experience as well, which I find uh, valuable. And the budget experience that he has. Time and time again, we've heard from people who have said that his experience building a budget is exceptional, that he has worked in, ta in tandem with various community leaders and they all spoke very highly of his expertise and his ability to move that forward in a, in a positive direction. We need that. I appreciate our town administrators saying that they are willing to help him master that process, um, but that's, that's not really uh, what I'm hoping for. So the last thing that I'll say is this. I totally hear what Amy was saying and, and some of you guys are saying about the head versus the heart. And that your heart is telling you that Mr. Roche is the better candidate or is, you know, is the person who can build better relationships and, and all of the intangible skills that we that we find so important. But I spoke to um, a t you know, in I spoke to a community member in Natick who is also a paraprofessional at that school, at the school that he taught at. And she said that in Natick, people feel the same way about him that the people in Sheba feel about Jeremy. And that it would be a tremendous loss for Natick if he were to come here. And I think that because we don't know him, that there is a bit of a disconnect on what kind of a person he is. But from what I could tell, I think he is, is, um, is able to fulfill what our hearts require right now. And even more so, very much so, what our heads really need. And although this is one of the hardest decisions I've made sitting on this committee, um, with all of the lenses that I wear and can put on, I believe that Kirk is the right candidate at this moment in time. Like a motion or a straw poll. So, I wonder if uh, anybody else wants to speak again 
If there's anything else that's been left unsaid that maybe you want to circle back on, there are a few people who are unclear, it's up to you. Okay. I'm not unclear. Would you like to share with the committee? No, I've made, I've made a decision, but that's my decision. You want to wait for the vote? Whatever you vote. Chair, I just wanted to, I'm, I'm still thinking about this bed piece and the concern about this bed piece. And I think one of the things that, um, so we have to think about special education as well as a continuum, right? There are some children who are much more complicated learners and there are some children who have um, far less challenges. They, they, they need supports, but they, they don't face the same challenges, right? And it's a continuum from here to there. And some of us, several of us in this room have kids that face those challenges, right? <coughs> um, I, I feel like what special, special education at its best, right, is going to give every child what they need to be the, who they can become, to reach their potential, right? And, and that vision, I think, I felt that vision as we were interviewing. I, d I did feel that vision. Um, I, I don't know that it was expressed clearly, and I, to your point, that needs to be made clear, right? Um, but I, I do feel for the people who interpreted that statement differently than I did, their concerns, right, and their fear right now. Because when you have a child that has significant needs, that is a part of your life, that fear, and what, what will happen, right? Um, so I guess my wish would be that they would feel reassured. Um, that our children will get what they need. Thank you. Would you like to say anything else in here? Me? You don't have to. Um, I think the only thing that's, uh, the reason why this decision is so difficult for me is because um, you know, while Mr. Downing checks a lot of boxes and he meets the selection criteria very, very well, what's not translatable from paper qualifications is just um, the, the relationship aspect. And, you know, I think if, if we were in any other moment in time, at Neshoba, I'm not sure that there would be so much emphasis placed on that. Um, but I think what became apparent to me over the my last year on the school committee is just how important the relationship aspect is. Because when there is not, when those relationships don't exist, um, the system becomes a little dysfunctional or has the potential to become dysfunctional. And so I think um, that's my biggest concern is that even though we might want to hire the most well-qualified candidate, um, I need to make sure that the person would be able to build relationships with their member towns and, and work effectively with them. Um, but I, I also can't um, discount the MSBA piece, uh, especially sitting on the building committee and knowing what work is ahead of us and what experience Mr. Downing would bring to that process. Um, it's, it's very attractive. <laughs> um, I think we're in a very, very fortunate position to be, to have both 
to have three finalists and, and two that um, that are so well qualified. Um, but I, I'm I'm still mm -hmm. a little undecided. That's okay. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Anybody else want to Yes, I'll even say second? something. In regards to my colleague from Ryan Caps in this box, she's talking about the challenges that faced by you know, parents of special ed students. And I know this is not a discussion on special ed. This is about hiring a superintendent. But let me be frank, let me be blunt. The biggest challenge that parents face, parents who have special education, special ed students in this district, is dealing with this district. And when we hear a candidate who says to us that you cannot run too quickly when that child is determined to have a special need, that sends reverberations through at least 20% of the parents of the students of this district. And that, you know, you, we talk about here, well, maybe this is what we do and he's gonna not do this. I'm just going by what he said. Those are his words. You can't run too quickly to it. And to me, that says that that's a, that's a problem. And it's disconcerting. And it, it, as I said, it, it creates fear and, and the distrust of the district for those parents. And we're talking 20%, if not more, of the parents of this district. I don't expect that my words tonight are going to dissuade anybody from supporting this particular candidate. I think the people on this district, this district committee, have made the de de determination, and nothing I'm saying here tonight is going to dissuade you otherwise. But I think it's important that if, if this gentleman is hired, that he understands that there's 20 percent of the parents who aren't appreciative of the fact that we don't want the that he's, that he's suggesting the district not run too quickly to address that need. I had a completely different interpretation of that comment. Um, not to discount your interpretation, but I, I, I took it a different way. Um, for, what the, for whatever that's worth, I, I, I took it as um, you don't want to rush the evaluation of somebody who may, might have a special need. but. I think I didn't take it as like you don't you want to run away from somebody who needs evaluation. Karen, um, and I, I took it differently too. And I guess what I interpret this data, and and I understand there are different interpretations and different lenses to look at that comment. But as somebody who whose job it is to make those determinations in those meetings and with those flowcharts. What I took that to mean is you, what you want to do is make sure all the intervention has been provided leading up to that moment. That is part of the diagno diagnosis for some categories. And that when you get there, you, that you have it right. It's not to slow it down. When it, when it needs to happen, it needs to happen. And that is the right thing to do and that is the legal thing to do. But we want our district and we want our kids to have those opportunities for intervention all the way along and then those students who don't respond to that intervention should 100 percent be evaluated and if they are found eligible then you can check those boxes and you can't run quick enough to get them the next level of support that they need so i, I guess i interpreted more as you don't want to jump to conclusions you want to make sure all these steps have been followed and all those supports have been provided along the way and when you get to that point, if that isn't the case for some of those students, that, that they're not responding, then you move very quickly. So, and it, you know, I know we could go on and on. And people have different opinions. So I just wanted to piggyback on what Amy was saying. Thanks, Karen. Yes. Um, remembering something from I think is his statement in the package that we got from um, the selection committee. Um, he used the term. I drove down the percentage of um, IEPs or special education students or something. And while I'm far from knowledgeable in, in the area of special education, just using the phrase driving down the percentage kind of was a red flag to me. That's all. That's I thought really want to continue with the conversation about um, 
this conversation, but I would just like to point out that um, the parents of students with special needs in Native Massachusetts are not dramatically different from the parents of students with special needs in our regional district. And if, um, and so some of us do understand because in, because we are have it in the field and what response to intervention is. But don't you think that if that students were being denied um, interventions that the very well educated uh, for in, in large part, but then they're diverse, they can't even build anymore in Navy because so many people have been there. Do you think that those parents would put up with their children being denied? I just, I'm, I'm just asking. I don't think so. <laughs> I really don't think so. They, parents are, we are our, our, our children's first and best teachers. And our job, as I used to say to parents who come in to me and complain about something, um, that parents are supposed to advocate for their children. That's what we do. We are their first and best teachers and their advocates. And so I would just offer that, that uh, I think as Sharon said, that, that um, some, some parents you know, started to worry. And I, and I almost feel as though there's some conflation of um, some of the candidates' um, you know, positions on special education rather than just looking what we're talking about first, Downing right here. But I, I just, I think that parents are parents, and there's a, there are similarities between the parents in Natick and, and our parents who are fierce advocates for their children, and I have such pride in that, because our students with special needs absolutely need to have parents who are fiercely uh, advocating for them. So I, I understand both, both sides in a sense, but I think there is a misunderstanding of what Kirk was talking about and the way he, he brought RTI to his elementary school, shared it with other principals, but not just RTI, response to intervention, the professional development so the teachers understood, and then it spread and spread and it's deepened too, and the professional development continues. And it seems to me that, that parents in, in Native um, are, are pretty happy with how their, their children are doing. So I hope we can move on. Yeah. Madam Chair, that was, that was my suggestion that we, we take a poll of the committee at this point. Um, is everybody ready to take a vote? A vote or a poll? We can, um, at this, if there's no more discussion, we can actually move to a point. Dorothy, am I correct in that? Do what you want, yeah. whichever you prefer. Actually, um, I think that I didn't make a second statement and, and I, I do want to afford everybody a second go around if they wanted to. But there's just one more thing that I wanted to say and, and I do want to press upon people this, that not knowing a candidate well doesn't mean that that candidate can't also be the heart of our district. And so, um, in Natick, it appears that he plays that, that Mr. Downing plays that role as the heart of their district, and he is beloved there. It's just that you don't know him. And so, what would we be leaving behind um, if we go in another direction? And um, I've already il illuminated the things that we would leave behind, um, in particular, this, the central office experience, the MSBA preparation, the mentoring that he could bring for our administrative team, his regional experience, his budgeting experience. Anyone else? Sir, would you like to make a motion? What do you, I, don't, I don't have internet. <laughs> there you go. Um, you want me? You want me to read? You want which? Well, you want me to read this motion or that motion? But but here's the thing. All right, I'll I'll read. Would you mind if I read this motion? Because that will be my motion. I think that that is fine. Okay, all right. 
Because that's the motion that I was given, and that's the motion I prepared. Okay. Uh, this is the with the changes that you've inserted. Yes, right? and and with all due with all due respect and with all due humility, I think my motion is better. <laughs> <perfectly> honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's right. Okay, Joseph, take it away. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I move that uh, candidate Jeremy Roach be appointed superintendent of schools for the Neshoba Regional School District, subject to and conditioned upon the successful negotiation of a contract of employment mutually agreeable to the candidate and the Neshoba Regional School District, and signed and or executed by the candidate and the Neshoba Regional School District Committee and or the district committee's designee. I would further move that if this motion is approved that we direct the personnel, and we, are we doing personnel subcommittee on this? Pers uh, an ad hoc. Oh, okay, strike that. I would further move that, that we direct the ad hoc negotiation committee as appointed by the chairperson with the approval of the district committee to begin contract negotiations with Mr. Roach with the assistance of the district committee's legal counsel. Second. Don't know that there's any discussion, but <laughs> if there is, further discussion. Point of order. Yes. So we're going to have this motion, and then we'll have a motion. Or are we going to have a motion to vote on each candidate? No, that's the motion before. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. It's okay, but, but you're correct. We will, if, if this motion fails, mm -hmm. we can entertain a different motion. Got it. Thank you. Everybody understand? So this motion is to appoint Mr. Jeremy Roach as superintendent of the Neshoba Regional School System. Point of order, forgive me. Yes, sir. If there's a tie, since there's 10 members here, yes. the motion fails. Correct. Correct. And as Dorothy explained to us last night, we could do it 100 times to try to move toward a majority. Everybody ready to vote? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two it. So. We're going to go around the table. Steve? Yes. Mary? No. Oh, goodness. Hold on. <laughs> I guess I'm on. Karen? No. Mike? Yes. Leah? No. Joe? Yes. Rich? No. Amy? Yes. Brett? Yes. Sharon? No. Tie, right? Indeed. Mm. We have a tie. Surprise. <laughs> Should we make a second no, motion? That fails, right? That's yeah. what that motion is now. Motion not passed. Right. Not passed. Mm -hmm. So should we okay. do the second motion? Should we all on to the second motion? Well, I would imagine that the second motion might have the same result. But we can still, go ahead and try to do that. Do it. Yep. Why don't you make the motion? Why don't you have Mr. Horst make that motion? Oh, no, excuse me. I'm sorry. Why don't, um... Mr. Echo? I'm sorry. I should sure. have printed this off and paper form. That's okay. I'm sorry. That's my fault. I apologize. Thanks. It's just the rope. So, could you pass it over to Mr. Echo? Yes. Maybe point yeah. him in the right place. I gotta get the right focal line. This is the <laughs> official parliamentarian. I just want to make a second match on it. This one here? This one right here. Okay. Madam Chair, I move that uh, Kirk Downing be appointed superintendent of schools for the Neshoba Regional School District and conditioned upon the successful negotiation of a contract of employment mutually agreeable to the candidate and the Neshoba Regional School District Committee. Excuse me, Neshoba, oh, I had that right, Neshoba Regional School District Committee and signed and or executed by the candidate and the Neshoba Regional School Committee and or the district committee's designee. I would further move that we direct the personnel committee to begin contract negotiations with Kirk Downing with the assistance of the district committee's legal counsel. Point of correction on that, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, Mr. Eckel, you may want to, I'm sorry, that wasn't made clear. You may want to strike that portion about the personnel subcommittee and just replace it with the ad hoc negotiation committee as, approved by, as pointed by the chair and approved by the district. Thank you for your attention, Diminutia. Thank you. Should I rewrite the whole thing? Re re say the whole thing? You can, you, can just, you can just say strike that. Um, I don't think the motion has been seconded yet. So, Correct. So just uh, to strike the personnel subcommittee and just add in the language right here. Okay. 
I'm amending the motion. I would further move that we direct the ad hoc negotiations committee to begin contract negotiations with the assistance of the district committee's legal counsel. Second. Thanks, Mayor. Anybody like to speak? Any discussion? Should we have a discussion before we take the opinion? Perhaps. Is anybody, is it just going to be the reverse vote? <laughs> I think we're, I mean, I know this is going to take time, but I, I really think this is a fortunate position to be in. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of feel like it's going to be bittersweet either way, and I think we're going to end up with a fantastic superintendent. That's my thought. I guess I would say <clears throat> I certainly respect all of my colleagues here. Um, I do have a child that has special education needs, um, certainly not to the same level as some of the other parents in our district have. But I just encourage our committee members, you know, I, I definitely want to listen to what the candidates have to say, but let's not judge somebody based on one comment, right? It, perhaps it was a poor choice of words, um, but at the same time, that's what we have to go on, right? Um, but I guess I would say, let's look at the whole person and not get not be so concerned about one comment that perhaps, if it was worded differently, would not bring the same alarm. And that's not to minimize any of your concerns, because I did not have the same challenges that some of my other committee members and families in town have, um, or in any of our communities. But you know, let's just not judge somebody based on one comment. That would be my suggestion. Thanks very much. Where do you want to start? <laughs> Say that again. Start with Sharon. For the vote? Okay, my friends. Sharon. Yes. Brett. No. Amy. No. Rich. Yes. Joe. No. Leah. Yes. Mike. No. Karen. Yes. Mary. Yes. And Steve. No. Okay. The motion fails. We okay. have a tie. Sean, no <laughs> Should we take a recess or something? I was just thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So we can take a five minute recess. Um, we need a motion for that. Yeah. Yeah. Move for five minute recess, Madam Chair. Second. And I would just um, tell or remind my fellow committee members who don't need a reminder, I realize that we should not talk about this outside of the public session. So um, all those in favor of taking a five minute recess. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank but the, um, the video is still on, so just FYI. I'm going to water it more somewhere. I think it's in the other room. You'd be like surprised to see, huh?
van. Should you... Uh,
I'm not sure he can really help. But maybe he can at least say it's How would you do it? Urgent. I actually know the trick. You can round it like this. All right. So we are um, ready to come back on. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting back to order after a short recess. And um, I guess I would ask the committee to kind of think on where you are right now. Wonder, is there room for you to reconsider? Is there anything that perhaps is still a question in your mind? And we can take another motion, move into another discussion. That's probably the best way to do it and uh, keep talking it through. Well, should we remake the motions? Yeah, we would have to redo a motion. Before, Just, we, before we redo a motion, could we ask Dorothy to um, let us hear again the feedback that came from the people she spoke to today? Would that be helpful? So Dorothy thought it might be um, helpful at any stage of the process to go back into our, our evidence and maybe talk a little bit more deeply about what we heard and what we saw, uh, anything that we think could be useful that we haven't said already, um, or just reiterate, but Sharon is asking if maybe, Dorothy, you could provide another summary of the feedback you got from our administrative team. Okay, uh, just re, just re, com complete, complete repeat. Sharon, yeah. Okay. Um, so I asked, um, I asked them about what they saw as the needs of the district, um, and they talked about relationships um, from three different perspectives, from the superintendent school committee relationship, um, that the next superintendent will be working with a school committee that is a fairly young committee and a large committee, um, and so that person has to be able to understand and structure the relationship so that everyone, under everyone understands the boundaries of their roles and that the relationship can be productive for the district. Um, communication and work together, they felt could be channeled uh, in a somewhat more organized manner, um, and developing a relationship would be critical to the stable leadership that I think everybody um, is seeking in the district. Um, in a relationship with the leadership team, amongst the leadership team, a superintendent's part of the leadership team, along with um, all the administrators, um, central office and principals, um, that's important to them, that, that team. They describe themselves as being cohesive and collaborative, um, that, and want that a team that wants to continue to go profe grow professionally um, and wants to feel re-energized to focus on the work after the pandemic and the other incidents that have necessarily um, taken time away from the focus in, uh, on vision and growth in the district. Um, they're looking for someone who will support them in that work um, and not someone that they have to support. Um, I know, I should note that there, there is a realization there that whoever comes in is gonna need some support, right? That it's not just, um, 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 there's also some thought to um, making sure that the, the building administrators are able to administer, have that site-based leadership, you know, the elementary, middle, and high, all have that site-based leadership um, that they should be able to have um, excuse me. <coughs> and they talked about the relationship with the towns and the importance of that, particularly around budgeting, um, being the complexity of being a regional district um, and the ability to establish and maintain those good working relationships with the three town governments um, and also with the community, the three communities, and um, the needs of some, for some healing um, that may need to go on. Um, vision that they talk, you know, many of them talked about vision for the district, um, vision for that, uh, um, the need to conceptualize and articulate a pre K through 12 vision um, and then carry it forward. Um, again, that need to um, turn the page to re energize and unify um, people around the vision for the future and to rebuild um, some morale. Um, in terms of budget, again, you know, that solid relationship to be able to build the budget and understanding of the budget, um, of, you know, at the district level and the, you know, the complexities of being a regional, a regional budget. 
um, MSBA. Um, they are aware that that is a you know a building project that's that's looming on the horizon, um, and that there is a need for some central office people to have the support um, for their part in the project, um, as well as the ability, obviously, for the superintendent to be able to advocate for the project. Um, and there was some mention of um, legal acumen. Um, you know, it's a there there can be complexities. Uh, complex situations that develop and with legal ramifications so knowing when is it um, when is it appropriate to bring in legal counsel um, so in terms of that and asking them how did you know how did they see the the candidates as sort of responding or being able to address those needs um, that they articulated um, to the, the importance of that that um, district lens came through um, you know, having that they felt that there was um, that um, district level um, experience was, you know, one thing to weigh. Um, and having that district lens in, t in terms of the ability to support and build that, that P create, P, sorry, you'd think I had been talking all night, <laughs> pre K through 12 vision. Um, and you know, in mentioning the the, the candidates, um, they did. Um, there was um, people who mentioned that um, Mr. Downing showed the experience of that that district level experience um, through the questions he asked, um, at, um, and that he demonstrated a depth of knowledge of the district by the questions he asked, um, and that. Um, that they felt he was able to make connections when he spoke with them. Now, granted, he had limited time to speak with anybody. So, um, and then that relationship piece, right? You've all been sort of talking about that relationship piece too. Um, that need to bring people together and energize them to move forward, um, and you know, look at that future for the district. Um, that 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 relationship piece, Mr. Roach's name, came up more in that aspect of the discussion. Um, that you know, people are people know him. People know that he's a relationship builder. They know that he um, can bridge divides, bring people together, um, has knowledge of the district, and many people here. Um, so, um, and you know, they've seen him. That he's been here. They've seen him grow um, as um, into different positions. So that was sort of a. That's not. I, I mean, that's not absolutely every comment. Every. But he made sort of like with a leadership profile that's sort of trying to encapsulate the general themes that I saw um, come up as I talked to the various people. I, mean, I have a question for you, Dorothy. The order that you gave us, the like the list of um, characteristics that were important. Yeah. Is that in any particular order? Like you um, started with relationships. Is that because it came up most often, or is that? Could you I, so I would say relationships, the, the superintendent's relationship with the school committee probably came up the most often. Um, vision um, came up quite frequently. And then the others, I, you know, I don't think there was any, that was sort of spread throughout, not as apparent as that relationship and that vision um, comments. Mm -hmm. Is that, Thank you. is that helpful? That, that is. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Would you like to entertain a motion? You can certainly do that if you'd like. Yeah. Steve, okay. Okay. I'm sorry, Steve. No, 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 I was pointing it to you. Oh, okay. Um, do we want to entertain a motion and have a discussion? No, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to make a comment. <laughs> well, I, I spoke before you. I was just about to make the motion. He had his hand up before you started. And I didn't notice. So let's give um, Steve okay. the benefit here of making a comment, and then we'll move to the motion. Okay, the only comment I would like to make is that basically we have two excellent candidates, but we can't agree on which one to hire. We have an option, and it's an option that Dorothy does not put way down at the bottom of the list. But I'm going to bring it higher, because I think it's relevant. That option is that we hire an interim superintendent 
for a period of one year, and that we start the search for, our, for a superintendent for ourselves earlier than we did this time, because I think we were a little late in that reduced the number of candidates that we might have attracted to the position. I'm just throwing that out there. It's a viable alternative. We're not the only district that is involved with dealing with an interim superintendent at this point in time, but it is a viable alternative. Thanks, Steve, for bringing that a little higher up the list there. Do you, do you have what you need? Sure. Thank you, Steve. Um, I move that Kirk Downing be appointed superintendent of schools for the Shola Regional School District subject to and conditioned upon the successful negotiation of a contract of employment mutually agreeable to the candidate and the Neshoba Regional School District Committee and signed and or executed by the candidate and the Neshoba Regional School District Committee and or the school district committee designee. I would further, I would further move that we direct the ad hoc subcommittee to begin contract negotiations with Kirk Downing with the assistance of the district committee's legal counsel. Do I have a second? second. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Rich. Sure. So let's open it up for a little bit of discussion if things have not been articulated or anything of that sort. Go ahead, Joe. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I'm going to go back to a comment that I heard from my colleague, Ms. Cohen, at the beginning of this um, session. And she talked about um, hearing from students or people in the, in the district that spoke very highly of uh, Mr. Roach. And I, I don't want to paraphrase it. I think something to the effect of um, it changes life, they change his life on that. Um, before this process even started, well, actually, once the um, three finalists were um, determined and chosen, uh, I, I, and again, I don't have any uh, illusions that anything I'm going to say here is going to change anybody's mind, but Maybe. <laughs> I'd be optimistic. Thank you, Mary. I, would, I, I was contacted by an individual who lives in Lancaster who is a student of Mr. Roach's. He's one of my neighbors, and he said the exact same thing to me. He said this guy changed his life. And his mother said the same to me, to me that, that this gentleman changed his life. And that's pretty compelling. So again, I, I don't I, I don't have any illusions that I'm gonna anything I say here is gonna change anybody's mind, but I just did want to echo what Ms. Cohen had said, that this is not an isolated remark and that I'm hearing and I've heard from a number of people in Lancaster. And the other thing I'll add to this thing, again, I'm speaking to Mr. Roach, not Mr. Downing, but for those of us who live in the western part of the district, Fitchburg is practically Lancaster. He's one of our own. He comes from North Central Massachusetts. He was educated in North Central Massachusetts. He's from here. He worked here. He's one of our own. And I think that means a lot to people who work in our district. That you know what? If this guy can do it, anybody can do it. I think it's a great incentive for people who work in our district to see that one of their own rise to the level of superintendency. And for this matter, I cannot support your motion, Mr. Echo. I am going to continue to support Mr. Roach. Thank you. Mary, so I'd like to go back to the point of um, relationships and relationship building. And this echoes um, something that Leah had said. And as I look over the notes, um, in Natick, so many people in the site visit um, were, um, you know, he is like Jeremy Roach is to the people who uh, were on his faculty and, and many of his students and, and families. Um, so Mr. Downing in, in Native is considered that way. So many times people said that they wanted the very best for him and he's poised and he's ready. And you know, when I think about that, our district ready to take off, he's poised, he's ready. But they talked about the fact um, that it was bittersweet that it would be a uh, heartbreak for, for them, but that he had done so much and the relationships that he that he built um, and the things that he did as a principal. And so it's different. The role of principal is different from the role of superintendent. And when Mr. Downing was a principal, 
he did a lot of the, the same, the wonderful things to bring the community in when the community wasn't coming in or the people that he wanted to see who were parents, what he did is he went out to them and um, he had meetings in people's homes. He did uh, potluck dinners and brought, the pe brought people in from different ethnic backgrounds and they brought not only um, who they are, but they brought their food and they shared their food and, it, and food is a wonderful way for people to get to know each other. So I just want to, I would hope people's uh, minds could be open to the fact that um, the relationships and the building of relationships is that the, the empathy that goes in and the, the deep listening that he does, those are characteristics um, that I feel as if I got to know him because, you know, interviewing twice and then going through all the site visits, the more uh, I, I learned of him and saw him, I, I want to say too that even the way the site visit was organized, he took out his own Zoom um, um, account. So, you know, when you think about this, does a district really want the person who they might be losing to use their district account? And, and yet that's, Zoom time, COVID time is such an unusual time. <clears throat> but the clarity, the organization that, that he demonstrated, he, got, he also uh, was working off campus and gave me his phone number in case we needed it, this for the technology. And we never did because we had, he had a separate account for this and things, and not only that, he gave us little summaries of every single person we were going to talk to. So you saw those too, whether you went to the site visit or not. But I can tell you that all those people showed up and we met them and talked to them and they want the best for him because he's always there for them because they, they understand and recognize his confidence, but they feel terrible if they're going to lose him. So, you know, no matter which one of these, these men we take, their districts are going to be very sad without them. But that speaks to their relationship building. So I, I, I don't know, if, as Joe said, if we're going to change any, any of our minds on this. Um, but I, I, I just would like people to be open to that. And I was so impressed. Because as I said in the site visit, it ended up that we were hosted, although we were in their district. And we had to hold it together. And he made it so smooth and so easy um, that, you know, at one point in, in one of the other districts, I was, I was left in charge and, and it turned out that three members were trying to get in and it didn't come up at the top of the Zoom that they were wait, in the waiting room. It just was because they already had the link. So the good thing was we rescued that because the people who were there, I asked them if they would just go over what they had said before and they were such good sports and they did that. But that wasn't, that wasn't in, in Mr. Downing, it was, that was not a native. So I'm, I'm just saying that's another example of um, he knows how to do things and he knows how to do things on a district level. And he has such a sense of humor too. So Thank I just you. hope that at least one person changes. <laughs> well, I don't know what else you know, what are you going to do. I think when you have two candidates, you'll be ashamed. Two good candidates will be ashamed to have to do an interim. Now interims, they are, you, they are wonderful. This, they're retired superintendents, so it's a great gig for them. Let me tell you, they make a ton of money, and they come in, and they can do good things, and they can, they're like a consultant coming in, a very well-educated and former superintendent consultant. Then they'll help things go along. But are they going to make any you know, innovation or radical movement for the district forward? They'll make sure things continue forward. But it's not gonna, it's never the same when you have an intro. And I, I hope we don't have to do that. Mike. Um, I just want to go back to uh, Mr. Gleason's point, who referred back to Ms. Cohen's point. Um, we had a, a virtual lunch with, um, I believe, the associate principal. The, the assistant principal, yeah. Assistant principal. Was that just you and me? I think it was. Yeah. Uh, I think it was at that point where I felt like I was really bummed out that not everybody could be at every site meeting, that I myself couldn't be at everything because you just yeah. learn so much about the character of individuals. Uh, 
the way that he spoke about Mr. Roach was incredible. I mean, it was another, he's changed my life. And he was, he was it, correct me if I'm wrong, it was emotional. Like he it was, was speaking very, very deeply about how transformative of a person this was. And he strikes me as um, very simply a special person. He's got some sort of quality that is able to reach and touch others. Um, and, you know, that's, like I said, that's, that's very special to me. Um, anyways, that's a bit of a side. Um, I've been on this committee for three years. This is my fourth year. From almost the first uh, meeting, I had people from my town telling me, there is a climate and a, and a culture issue. And it was, you know, at the time it was, you know, focused at the high school. And I, I, don't, I don't want this to be focused on the high school because the high school is simply one of several buildings, but it is where all of our towns coalesce uh, and it makes it an important um, touch point. Um, and, you know, things moved along. The first year moved along. There is a culture and a climate issue at the high school. Please, let's, we need to address it. Um, and fast forward, we had the Varaka thing. It came and it, and, it, and, it, and it lingered for a while. And if you recall the timeline, the timeline was that the executive summary of the Varaka case came, I think, the second meeting after we went fully remote for COVID. It was in April. No. It was before, way before that. Before no, no, no. no uh, sorry. This, this was when the school committee brought the executive summary to the public. Oh, okay. And so that came in April. That was, I think, the second meeting that we went virtual. And it felt like, okay. at least from the public's eye, we never really resolved that. I mean, it was all virtual. And it was actually very difficult for a lot of res residents. Then we went through all of COVID, and that has its own level of trauma. And it just feels like this climate and culture issue never really got resolved. It was never fully addressed. Um, and so I guess in uh, Mr. Roach's case, he very clearly thrives on opportunity being granted opportunities, um, thrives on people placing trust in him and confidence in him and him rising to the challenge. And if I think to the high school and I think about what um, a galvanizing effect he could have on that faculty and the trust that he could instill and how that would trickle down to the entire faculty of the district and how that immediately would, would bring in parents to trust him, I mean, that would be on the fast track to um, what I feel like is um, an unhealed wound. I feel like if we are focusing too much on let's just move it to the next step as much as I want to, we're really just gonna just, um, this thing is just gonna scar over and I don't like that feeling. There's something about that that I don't like. I would very much like to have someone who is vested in um, bringing together our, our uh, teaching community um, and, and bringing back what I think has been missing for you know at least at least three years. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah, a few things. Um, you know, Mr. Roche. A, a lot of people in our communities knew him, knew of him, and he's a known entity. But for me, I didn't know any of these candidates before the screening committee presented them to me. I've, I've lived here for just five years, and I've chosen to get very involved in the school district because I'm extremely vested in the success of Neshoba. But I think the point I'm trying to make is that even though I never knew Jeremy Mo Roche before last week, the impressions that have been made upon me through the site visits that I was able to um, participate in uh, they, they just really had an impact on, on me and they really um, made me feel like he's, he's, he, there is something special about him. Um, I think that he is so humble that he undersold himself during the interview. I mean, the work that he has done related to diversity, equity, and inclusion at Fitchburg is extensive, and and he barely um, hit on he, he barely touched the surface 
of, of what he's done there um, to make students of any race, ethnicity, origin, socioeconomic status feel welcome. Um, I'm not saying that Neshova has the same need from a diversity standpoint, but I think our community, I, I agree with Mike that um, he could repair the, the wounds that still linger from events that occurred in the last few years. Um, and you know, he, he hasn't been a superintendent, he may not have built a budget for regional school district, but he just strikes me as someone who will rise to the occasion. And when I shared out my, um, my take on the site visits, I, I shared with you what people answered when I asked what the biggest challenge that he would face was, but I didn't share out what people said his biggest strength would be. And um, I, I just I need to scroll up here to find that, but he, because I want to quote, um, geez, I'm so sorry. I had it right up and then I scrolled down. No rush. Uh, the word that one person jumped right in with is that he's a transformational leader. And um, he will surround himself with a cabinet who will help, um, help with innovations, um, help him navigate the politics. He's student center focused. And um, I'm still not finding the quote that I'm searching for. But give me another minute and I might. <laughs> um, the, the other thing that I don't think has come up, he, he knew the name of every student at the high school. 1,300 kids. Um, you know, I, I understand that it's a big leap from principal to superintendent and he's not going to be dealing with kids every day. But I mean, man, if we have somebody at the top who's inspiring our students, I just don't think we can go wrong. I think he'll be able to learn the other skills. That's my personal opinion. I don't think that, um, you know, if the, if the will of the committee is to hire Kirk Downing, I, I, I will support that. I think that we have two excellent candidates, but I have to follow my gut, and my gut says that the right choice right now is um, Jeremy Roche, and I'm really sorry that we remain in gridlock. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Amy. Uh, you know, to me, Mr. Roach, he looks at the at the at his population of students not as a data point, not as something to analyze. I mean, he talked about um, best buddies and how he was so proud. You could see it in his face how proud he was of those kids, and he knew those kids. Not as a data point, not as something to analyze, but as a child that he was helping to get to their potential. And that means something. You know, our, our kids in the schools, they're not data. They're not a data point. They are our children. And to be a data point, <laughs> that's tough. You know, and, and Mr. Downing, he seemed like he was about the data, about analyzing the data and critiquing the data, where Mr. Roach was, seemed to me to be a bit more about getting to know the children and seeing how it could help the children and, and knowing the children. That's, that's how I kind of took it. Thanks, Brad. Rich? Respectfully, I, I don't think he was reducing kids to a data point. Uh, you know, I, I know where you're coming from. Like you, you, you believe that he's, you know, going to get to know all the kids. But that's not really the role of the superintendent. The role of the superintendent is to steer the ship of state, right? We have, we have good principals in every building. We have great administrators. And what we need is a visionary that's going to take that and mentor the, the people in our organization to take it to the next level. 
And I guess the other thing I'd say too is you cannot measure, you cannot manage what you don't measure, right? And we do it every day. Kids take tests, they take an MCAS, we're all measured in, in, in lots of ways. What he's talking about is a more modern way to evaluate kids. And actually, if I was going to distill down what he had to say, it was easy with this, um, what was it called? Something Zilla. Does anybody remember the name? Data Zilla. Data Zilla. Mm -hmm. He could actually, there would be a traffic light scenario, right? Where you can measure how a kid is, whether they're going to be on track sooner. Are they on track where they need to be? To me, that's pretty exciting, right? They can look at that assessment. It's not the only assessment, right? It's, it's, one, it's one diagnostic tool for people to evaluate where kids are, right? And let's be honest, the special needs kids are, are, the, ki are the people that are getting this. It's not, it's not a traffic light thing, but they get a very comprehensive plan, right? And so this would, be, this would bleed into some of those other 80% of the kids that are in the district, right? So to me, that was pretty exciting. And I, I speak as a, as, a, as a parent of a special needs kid. Uh, not a complex, as complex learner as some of the other ones. But to me, that was pretty exciting, right? A way to evaluate all the kids in the organization. I, I will tell you, I have a real bias. I've built business intelligence systems. I've sold them my whole career. So I know what the power of data is. It takes the emotion out of the decisions, right? It allows people to deal, distill down and figure out exactly what the problem is, and then you can pivot it out away from that instead of coming up with just your own bias. Right? It's a framework to evaluate it. So, you know, I, I think the other thing I would say too is as inspiring as what Jeremy has to bring to the table, and I think that's great, that's not going to be his role as superintendent. His role as superintendent is to be spending it with administrators, building a vision, enacting that vision, working through other people. And, you know, I think Kirk is better prepared for that. I think he's been doing it for three years. He spent an internship. Uh, he talked about a modern way to move things forward. Um, and I found that quite compelling. And, you know, I, I don't want to, I know I kind of spoke to you, Brett, and I didn't, want, I didn't mean to speak. I was reacting to what you said. But, um, I, but I, I think there's a lot to be inspired by Jeremy. I think actually Amy really set the tone of this conversation great. There's your head and your heart. And I, I guess what I would say is, we have all these administrators, we have all these principals, all these great teachers doing a lot of that hard stuff. And we need somebody that's gonna be uh, more analytical, right? That's gonna be able to look and look what the levers are and say, you know what? I think we gotta sail that way. Everybody come along. And you know, when we talk about some of the stuff we're talking about with Jeremy, the, a lot of those skills are great, but they're also very tactical. And we need somebody that's gonna be more strategic. Strategic how they spend our money, strategic how they, the, they enact that vision, and how they work through other people. And I really think Kark is, in my opinion, head and shoulders above the other two for that reason. He has experience doing this, and I guess, you know, if we want to have a person that's going to come in here and be a cheerleader, I think that's great. But I'm not so sure that that's going to strategically set the direction that we need to go. Thanks. So, so uh, you know, I, I agree with everything that Rich said. Um, and also, I want us to remember we have a brand new principal at the high school, highly qualified. I really think, although I wasn't part, any part of that decision making, but from the sidelines watching, um, she was my clear choice. <laughs> and um, so I'd just like to say that, but let's give her a chance too. You know, this is gonna be her school. A principal is in charge and is the lead teacher um, of a school. And we have a new principal coming in. What we need is a new superintendent for everyone. And I think it's such an important point that our administrators, we have a strong administrative team. Not only that, when I hear about 
uh, relationships between and other districts, um, between union and, um, and administration, uh, how many memorandums of agreements and things like that. Uh, we don't have that. That's some of the legacy that our superintendent, um, who is leaving, is, has left us. That our teachers are, for the most part, really pretty happy. And we have high, um, well-educated, um, you know, really skilled teachers. And, and, and they're happy. And they want to stay in the show And they love the show And they're doing a terrific job. And we have principals. And we don't want to lose any of those principals either. And we have and the central office team. Um, and there, everything is working well. There are areas that didn't work as well outside of those areas. But let's, let's, think, about, let's think about them, too. And I think that point of whether someone is able to mentor them and help them move forward professionally or is going to need to be mentored is, is, is fair to them. And no, I don't, I don't want any of them to leave. These are some of the strengths that we have. Well, we talked about the fact um, that when we were first talked when she was leaving about being poised. And I remember Leah talking about that. We are so well poised in this district to move forward. And, and some of that can be the healing, which I, I believe that Kirk can, can do. He has training in collaborative problem solving. And, uh, and so not only has he, he, does, he has the strategies for that, but I believe he's got the heart for that too. Because you can't, you can't just be successful if it were just analytical, if you're doing collaborative problem solving. He's got those skills which he could pass on, which he could employ here. So I just, uh, I, I just, my point at the beginning was, we have a new principal for the high school, and she looks terrific, and let's give her a chance. Thanks, Mary. Uh, I have something new that I wanted to add that I hadn't talked about earlier, and it was about my question about curriculum instruction and assessment, something that's very, very important to me and something that I think is at the heart of what we do. I think that the social emotional learning overlay is equally important, but if we don't have proper scope and sequence of curriculum and proper instructional strategies and assessments that are used to determine student achievement properly and fairly, then we're, we might as well phone it in and, and just hang it up. And so when this question was asked of the candidates, I heard, I heard Kirk talk about how the end result, our graduates, what do we want our graduates to be, right? He could really talk shop around curriculum, instruction, and assessment. What do we want our graduates to be? He said graduation outcomes are our focus. It should be what we care about most. And then we move backward from there, right? There's a theory of education called backward design. We move backward from there and determine what do we need to do all along the way to get kids to that outcome. He spoke really eloquently about that. He talked about the enduring understandings that kids need to have. He talked about the essential questions that we should be asking. And then when we asked him about the accountability piece, how do you monitor for that achievement? He talked about the datazilla, he talked about his data dashboard, and I also thought to myself, finally, my child is going to be evaluated and like assessed to the point where I will have data on my child that is everyday data that is based upon reading comprehension tests, formative assessments, summative assessments inside the classroom not a distant standardized test that many of us disagree with, but at everyday information on my child, on all four of my children. He talked through that so thoroughly, just like a practitioner. And it was so, it was so invigorating to me. He talked about priority standards and using common assessments within teacher teams and then having the, the professional learning communities of our teacher teams dive into the assessments and ask themselves, what is it that they're successful on? What do they need to be reme remediated on? What can we do to do better next time, right? So he talked about all of the 
the heart of teaching and learning. And it just made my heart sore that this that our kids could continue to have that and, and even more. Because you know our, our schools do a good job of it right now, but it needs to be a main focus moving forward as we are poised to take off. What I, what I did hear in some of the other candidates was um, kind of a lack of understanding of how you monitor for student achievement. And because that is our focus, that is our charge as a school committee, I'm most interested in understanding which candidate has ideas on how we can monitor for student achievement. At this point, and in my two years on this committee, I don't think I have actually been given the information I need to monitor for student achievement properly, and that's my statutory obligation. And so um, I heard Jeremy talk about AP tests and SATs. And I don't like those as measures for monitoring for student achievement. I don't think that that is what we should be focused on. He said we have 341 AP tests that were taken, but I, as an AP teacher, don't actually know what that tells me. It tells me that our kids try to challenge themselves, but it doesn't tell me how many kids are taking those tests and, and how those tests even matter in the real world. I wanna see authentic, teaching and learning with in priority standards, enduring understandings, essential questions, and all of that practice is what Kirk talked about. And so because that's so important to me, especially as a high school teacher with a child in high school, that building is where kids are given wings. And I'm excited as we move forward to, to see kids really start flying. I think that that will happen under Kirk's leadership. I do. Could, could I read something into the record that we just got an email released from one of his colleagues, one of Kirk's colleagues, who's, who went to the whole committee and. Madam um, Chair, I don't object to this. This is I, I don't. This is this is you're telling you're reading an email that's coming in to. Well, I was asking if it was appropriate. Well, I'm going to leave it to the chair, but I, I would object to that. Yeah, I think that it is at right. this point too late. Okay. And, and to yeah. be considered at a later time if necessary. Without objection. <clears throat> um, so I'm just going to throw it over to Sharon and then maybe back to you. I just, I'm really listening to all of this and, and I feel like the waters, again, are really muddied because Jeremy is a known quantity in this district. There are pre existing relationships and that goes both ways. Right? That helps in some respects and it and it makes it more challenging in some respects. But I guess what I'm thinking about is if I were to go back and I were to look at these sheets that we were taking notes on, and I were to go question by question and look at each one and say, when I was taking my notes and when I think back about the answers that the candidates were giving um, to each of these questions which person was able to give the more in-depth, more substantive answers to these questions. Um, and across the board, if I were to go through this piece by piece, I, I think the fair answer would be, and if I were to look at it without bias, right? I think the fair answer would be the most in-depth answers that we received that had the most information, the most showed the most understanding of um, the system and of the question. If I go through it piece by piece, I think that that comes from Kirk. I think Jeremy is a great, great person. I think he's a great leader. I think he's got enormous potential. I think he's a great principal. Um, but when I look at these questions and I think about the substance of the answer and the depth, so the understanding that is shown when they give that answer, the depth is there for Mr. Downing. The depth is not there yet for Jeremy. Right? It doesn't mean it won't come, it means it means time. But right now, we have a candidate who does have the depth and the understanding 
and a candidate who does not have it yet. So if we can, I understand and, and I don't disagree, I agree relationships are very, very, very important. Um, but there's, this, there's another component here that has a lot of weight too, and that is depth of understanding. Um, and, I, and I think the other piece I would say is to the point of having existing rela relationships will lead us to a better path. That can be true. Starting fresh with someone who has no pre-existing knowledge of who we are and what we're all about and the, the challenges that we faced and how we've gotten to here can be equally valuable because that person comes in with no expectations, no preset ideas in mind about who we are, where we've been, where we want to go. That person needs to learn it all. Um, so I think that that has value um, in terms of starting, you know, we have an opportunity right now, right? We have an opportunity to turn the page and start fresh and build something new. Um, so, uh, you know, we need to seize that opportunity. Thanks, Sharon. So, we're, we are you know, a high achieving district, and what do we want to be? A higher achieving district, which comes from our, our students um, and their achievement. And, and I do mean that academic, social, and emotional, physical, artistic, <coughs> Totally, you know, that's really what what propels um, a district to be high achieving, as well as expending um, the kind of, of, of money that that does that, that we do that. Mm -hmm. And um, and so to Leah's point about curriculum instruction and assessment, um, in Natick, they did um, a, a literacy, a review of the literacy, you know, which, uh, Kirk was very instrumental in doing, uh, especially elementary, but then it went all, all the way up K-12. We, we need, oh, and they, and they did social studies review, uh, and that was high school as far as I understand, mm -hmm. which we really need that. Our district is behind, I hate to say this to you, but we really are behind in terms of um, it, it, having our curricula aligned with curriculum standards, but also uh, aligned in such a way that there is continuity, you know, laterally and, and vertically. Looking at some of what Leah's talking about, <coughs> about doing things by backward design. What do we want students to know and be able to do? And that's really important. What do we want them to know and be able to do? And to find out that, you know, you, have, you go backwards from that. There's the goal right there. We want to be a higher achieving um, district. And how do we do that? And it's determining what those goals are and what those outcomes are. Then you back up and you say, wait a second, how do we get there? And oftentimes what, they, what you do is you're going, you're going all the way back to when students uh, are much younger and looking at the innovation of what really happens, I've said this before, innovation in our public schools happens in the elementary level, not on a secondary level where a lot of us have been for a long time. It's the elementary level. And, um, and so sometimes it's a little easier for it to come that way, but it needs to happen and we need to bring, we were behind, when I came on, on school committee, we were just moving into some of the literacy practices that had been uh, in, you know, um, readers and writers workshop just coming in, which for example in Hudson we had done eight, nine years ago. And you know, what I, what I, I know of uh, other districts that are high achieving, and I say that, not so much we can say like, we're in the show, but we're in number 10 by this criteria. No, what matters is, are students achieving? And that they're moving up. But we have been behind. And you kind of hide behind, I mean, there's so many accolades, there's so many wonderful things about the district, but you know, it comes down to a lot you know, in terms of curriculum and curriculum, instruction, and assessment. And that's where we really need to focus. Um, we've got a great teaching and learning department. And to have somebody come in who is the, the assistant superintendent in NAIDIC, with, you know, high achieving, where it's curriculum assessment, 
Um, and innovation. We talked about we don't want to do things the way they've been done for a million years. We need to catch up and move forward and bring this whole district forward. And that's what Kirk can do. Thanks, Mary. Um, thank you, Mary. And thanks, thanks to everybody for, for such frank and honest discussion. Um, I think at this point I'm prepared to change my vote. And, um, but I, you know, I'm still going to be Mr. Roach's biggest advocate. <laughs> um, what I want to say is that I'd love to find another, this is out of the box thinking, and it's a discussion for another time, but I would love to find another way to bring him to our district in a different role. Um, I, I can't, my battery is almost dead. I was trying to pull up a notes that, like a specific quote, but he referred to, he said that he has been referred to in his district as the chief communication officer. And we have a, we have a need for communication, really good communication in our district. And so it occurs to me that perhaps there is a, another solution out there somewhere if we were to decide that we could create a, a, a different role. Um, in our administrative team. So uh, I don't know if that brings us to a point where we can vote. Um, I'd like to call the vote. Thanks, Amy. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mr. Apple. I think we have to make a motion. Yep. We have, we a, have motion. a motion. Have no, you've got to make a motion to end debate. Uh, uh, I forgot oh. we had the other motion. I'm sorry. There's a motion <laughs> on the floor. Mr. Oh. Apple made the motion. He's now moving to end debate. Is that true? I'm moving to end debate. Second. Any discussion on the motion to end debate? No discussion on that. That's it's just a vote. All in favor? Requires two thirds majority. All in favor? What do we got? Oh boy. What's Put your favorite? hands up high. One, two, three, four. Wait, I got it. Right, let me just call. All right. So. Oh, yeah. Okay, I guess we should All do right. that you right now. Gotcha. Mr. Rubenstein. No. Dr. McCarthy. Yes. Ms. Devine? Yes. Mr. Horsch? Yes. Mr. Brito? Yes. Mr. Eckel? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Collins? No. Ms. Pock? Yes. Ms. Gleason? No. So that's. Seven, yes, three, no. That's two thirds. Yeah. All right. Thank we'll, you, Mr. Eckel. We'll, we'll, we'll move the question now. Sure. So, my friends, we uh, the motion on the floor is to appoint Kirk Downing, superintendent of the Neshoba Regional School System. And so, I will go back around the table. Mr. Rubenstein. No. Mary. Yes. Karen. Yes. Mike. Yes. Leah, yes. Joe? No. Rich? Yes. Amy? Yes. Brett? No. Sharon? Yes. Thank you, everyone. The motion passes. What was the number? 723. Thank you, everybody. Congratulations. Would it be appropriate? Oh, yes, it would be appropriate. So yes. Mr. Horst asked me to do it. You want to do it? Well, well, I'm sorry. You may be misinterpreting what I wanted to do. Okay. <laughs> why, don't, why don't you? The dance you? on the table. <laughs> I will. I will move that we make it unanimous. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, second. Would you like me to roll call? Oh uh, yeah. We can just do it. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll listen to the discussion. On it. Uh, so the motion on the floor is unanimous consent and support of our newly appointed superintendent. All those in favor of that support? It's not unanimous. Nine to one, is that right? Not nine to one. I'm sorry, nine to one, I'm sorry. I'm not a math major, nine to one. Only I can see why you wrote ten to one. <laughs> Would it be appropriate, Dorothy, to take a very short recess for a little bit of housekeeping on my part. Would you all, um, is that okay? Sure. Well, you need a motion to take a recess, but 
I move that we have a recess for five minutes. I I'm going to second that. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of a housekeeping break. Thank you, everyone.
we'll call the meeting back to order. Thank you everyone for um, an incredibly healthy and honest debate about things that matter to kids. And uh, that, that's why we're here. So I really appreciate all of you. I appreciate all of the perspectives that you bring. And um, everything that you said tonight will not be lost on anyone because everything you said matters and is really meaningful. And um, so, shall I share, Dorothy, or? Absolutely. Okay, so I had the opportunity to speak very briefly just now um, with Mr. Downing. He is thrilled at um, the opportunity, he is grateful, and he expressed his uh, thanks, and he's looking forward to next steps. He was thrilled. Um, Yay! I'm so proud. Mr. Eckel. I just wanted to say thanks to Mary, who spearheaded this process, and of course to Dorothy too. Mm -hmm. um, this is a lot of work, and uh, Mary walked the walk. You know, there's a lot of other people. I mean, Sharon did a lot too. A lot of people did a lot. Sure did. Um, but I just thought I'd, I'd mention that because uh, this this was a super tight time frame, and it could have easily gotten screwed up, and it didn't. And a lot of times, people don't get credit when there is a, there isn't a crisis, <laughs> right? Things went well, and I just want to recognize that. Thank you. Cheers, Mary. Thank you so much. So, um, the next matter of business on our agenda is to appoint an ad hoc negotiation sub, uh, subcommittee tasked with coordinating matters related to the new superintendent's contract. And would you like to take care of that, Mr. Gleason? Yeah, um, when you... No, you no. You we just you don't. You just want to appoint. We don't need a motion. No. You, well, you, what you're going to do is you would you will ask for volunteers to serve on that, and then we can affirm by to the hand vote of the Fantastic. individuals. Yeah. So, um, we have several members who are happy to help. I am sure, and so we have to avoid a quorum. So not. So you all can't be on the subcommittee. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that might be a problem, but. Um, so I have members on on my list here that are that are willing to do it, but I have too many. So, are there people who feel like they can um, de uh, dedicate their time at the beginning of next week to sit on this subcommittee? Can you just show your hand if you're able and willing? Is it in the evening? It's up to the to the committee. I, I mean, you have It'll to. It'll probably be in the day. I would think. No, it'll be in the evening. I mean, we are going to be working with Mr. Downing, so you know we'll have to coordinate schedules. So it seems that Mary, Steve, and Rich are all able. Thank you very much for joining that. And it's at the will of the chair that we appoint ad hoc. Yeah, it's, it's it's at the will of the chair, and then then we basically just approve. So. Question. Yeah. Leah, didn't you say you have had more people than maybe three of us? We do. Do you want more than three, Mary? No. Okay. You're just confused about the count? Yes. I think I, think I had five who were two, okay, okay, who two, emailed two. me, but <coughs> I think three is probably a good number, and especially okay. with me um, likely being a part of it. I also have the building um, subcommittee that is meeting uh, at the okay. beginning of next week. So. Okay. Um, so we'll go with the three of you folks and then and um, move forward with that, uh, without objection? Yeah, that's what I said, without objection, that's fine. Yes. There's no, no objection. <laughs> <laughs> Love that term. Yes. <laughs> okay, my friends. All right, so we have a subcommittee. Excellent. We do have a uh, negotiation, an ad hoc negotiation subcommittee. And that is the last matter on our agenda. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So <laughs> All those in favor. All right. So proud of you guys. Thanks so much. Thank you.